to. Greetings and welcome back to the watch. Though we need confirmation that we're live. So chat, if you can hear us, let us know, uh, because then we'll get stuck right into it to this special and wonderful uh, Wheel of Time episode eight. Wheel of Time. <laughs> Yay! Woo! 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 All right. So obviously our response to the episode is a bit lackluster, but the response to doing a, a special live stream review. Well, that's freaking awesome! Yeah. Do we have confirmation that they can see? Yeah, you can see my fat head there. Hey! Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, Nathan. Thanks, Sir Nathan. Oh, I can see myself over there. Oh, this is great. Wait. Are we on TV? We are. I'm on TV. Hi. Uh, Hi, Mum. <laughs> yeah, so, look at me now, Dad. This is uh, special in a number of ways because we're also joined by my lovely wife, uh, honey. Would you like to say hello? Hi, everyone. <laughs> Look at that! We, we, she, she did an avatar here, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So everyone in the comments was saying, I can't believe Oz doesn't know who Red Sonja is. Yeah, it's pretty sad. There are people who don't know who Nelson Mandela are. Is, who? was. What's more sad though? Red no, Sonja no. or Nelson Mandela? Who was more important <laughs> to society? <laughs> Some well, people would have a discussion. Are you telling me that I need to, to watch what I say? It's just she's a staple of pop culture. And it else. was Nelson Mandela's wife who did the bad stuff. <laughs> I have, I don't know the context. All right. So yes, welcome back to the watch. This is a very special live review and discussion. I'm going to go through some of the format of how what we plan to do. Just get it over with. Hurry up, <laughs> okay. you bastard. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the cycle is broken. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, this is a, like also a Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, you know, season's greetings. This is technically Christmas Eve here in Australia. Yes. Mm. So this is a special Christmas Eve, uh, and it's also going to be not. Re it's kind of like our, our sign off because we we do have a New Year's break, and so uh, content will be slower. Uh, there might be one or two videos that might pop out, pop all out, you know, go live here or there. But uh, we're going to be back into the swing of things uh, more uh, seriously after what January 9th, I think it is. January 9th. Um, and so this is also a end of year kind of celebration. celebration yeah. Right, right. Uh, now we also have uh, Chaco, my lovely wife, is monitoring the chat. And so what we're going to be doing, we're going to be uh, let's trying to get some feedback from the chat through the general discussion, especially if you guys know things that uh, we either missed or you want to bring up. And so uh, my wife is going to be the discerning one to pick up uh, what will get to be mentioned because we've got lots to go through and I don't have the chat in front of me right here. And then after the review, we're going to go through all the super chats. That's the plan or hope. Every right? super chat? Unless there's lots of swearing or it's inappropriate or something like that. So yeah. if you super chat mentioned, common sense, guys. Okay, I oh, wheel of time episode eight, the finale. You didn't like this one? Oh my goodness! <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just you, trying to... you don't have a tell at all when you're lying. I'm do doing you? the voice that a soy would do. <laughs> it was great. It was great. That ready? <gasps> wheel of time episode eight. Point at it. Point at what? Never mind. Um. No, this episode was a disaster. The thing is, though, I bet um, the people who love the show, this might be their favourite episode, because it has spectacle. doesn't matter that the causes or reasons for the spectacle are utter nonsense and garbage, and it goes levels of bad here. Not only is it wholly incorrect and wrong, um, in terms of just, if you didn't know the source material of this episode, there are bafflingly dumb things that happen. And then if you do know the source material, this is a desecration of unparalleled proportions of what they're doing to the to the Wheel of Time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get what you mean by spectacle, though. Like, why would they enjoy... You throw monkeys into a salad bar at Caesar, it'll be a spectacle. That doesn't mean it's going to be a good time. And that would be an objectively awesome thing to see. <laughs> Joe Rogan would love it. Um, anything that you want to share from the chat, hun? It's, it's, we got lots of activity. It's, it's going really fast, <laughs> and so my speed reading skills are being challenged. Wow, do you need to turn on slow chat? You might have to just latch onto something that you like now and then and share it with us. Oh, uh, pro tip, control F, Oz. 
don't, don't, don't. We have a delicate setup that we don't want to mess with. I'll check it. All right, sure, Let's sure. Let's have a look what we got. Okay, okay, so... Oh, oh my goodness. All right, back to what I was saying about... Um, uh, there are some big issues, um, uh, what you're saying. You said there was, like, an objective... Like, it, Mon you, you did monkeys or something, objectively good time, what were you saying? Do you have anything? I more? didn't use the word objective, I would oh, never yeah, use that, that word. Objective, oh yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, the reason why people are going to love it, the spectacle, that's what mm. I wanted to talk about. They're going to love, like, we saw the one power go crazy, lightning bolts blowing up, trollic army, big battle, huge conflict, things happening. That's why they're going to love it. On a surface level, there was more... Uh, not really, like it's weird how low budget the show feels. Yeah, this one wasn't as bad as other episodes, and so it's a massive turd. But this one they really tried to polish the turd, but by making it all the scenes dark. Well, all the scenes are real. Like there was one scene I legitimately couldn't see what was happening. It was like the scene where the trollocs were. It was like, just all little torches. There was that was like almost. I was like I could not see what was happening at all. I'm like, are you guys, and so they really threw down the, the you know. Yeah, it sucked. But because of the uh, spectacle and big things happening, mm. yeah, I reckon people are going to love this episode. All the people love the show. But if you are just looking at, all right, I need a good, valid explanation to underpin the logic or mm. the conflict. Otherwise, the conflict has no real stakes. It doesn't feel like mm. anything's truly going to happen here because the they're they're playing fast and loose with uh, the setups, especially if they end up contradicting their own laws and things that they set up. <laughs> Did they do that Don't touch anything. Oh, yeah. And, and then, then let's just sleep on some blighted trees. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to freaking have lots of investment about the danger of the blight. Don't touch anything. And then I'm going to sleep right next to a bloody tree. Do I? Do you see what I mean about having investment and stakes? You need to stay true to the rules. Otherwise, I'm going to not freaking care about anything and they are breaking their own rules in this show and so because of that it's just going to be deus ex machina the magic can do whatever mm. literally whatever and oh boy do i have problems freaking magic they have ruined the weaving of the magic from the books but even if you don't know the books they're just pulling things out of their rear end you don't need training you can just instinct whatever and potentially heal people that look to be dead Oh yeah, that happened, didn't it? Well, we have no. They'll say Nynaeve wasn't truly dead. She was like, I mean, everyone else like was. She just freaking burned herself out. Yeah, come back to me. And so, the magic is literally just do whatever we want for the plot. I go, which means no investment, okay? Because. Whatever happens, now it's like, oh, the magic can probably fix it because the magic can do what... And then they're going to put in arbitrary things to say, oh, we can't use the magic in this case when there were heaps of other situations where they could have used in that situation because they're not, like, they're not being true to the rules. If you are going to do magic in a story and you really want to have plot points pay off by virtue of the magic being used, you need to, one, establish the rules, make sure the audience understands those rules, and then stay true to them. If you start breaking them and just willy-nilly the magic can do anything... Who friggin' cares now? People are saying burning, getting your face burnt off means you got burned out. It seems like that. Yeah, I thought it just meant that Jazza releases another video about his feelings. Who? What? <laughs> burnt out. Oh, oh you're it's taking the dig at my brother. <laughs> Hello, I like Jazza. I, I, he, he made a video about the YouTube burnout. Yeah, I know. Okay. He, he does it every two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, a joke. It. Oh. It's a joke. I love Jazza. Yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, burning yourself out is basically... Well, there's levels, right? You can accidentally uh, um, uh, steal yourself if you're a woman and just burn yourself out from the source and you, you can't touch it. But then there's going so far that you kill yourself. Mm. Lenny's face friggin' <laughs> melted. <laughs> and if you know or are aware of the books, there is a big scene in one of the books and I believe it's, uh, I think it's um, either the beginning of book four or end of book three, but it might, it's around there. I th no, it's book four. But anyway, one of the characters, there's a, a little girl that dies and he's so distraught that this innocent girl was d killed in this attack that this person tries to bring them back alive. And you can't. You can't. Like he pumps in crazy amounts of the one power and uh, basically the people watching are saying, 
you're performing an abomination where he's right he actually starts to animate the body with the power get it to Ooh. move and it becomes even creepy he is so desperate to bring this person back but once that soul is gone from the body the one power cannot bring it back. it's like they just it's a well, yeah, definitive the soul rule reincarnated weren't it well, it, well, it waits. There has to be two spun out in the wheel again, so you don't know how long it takes. But oh. still, like, and so this really looks like it's Nynaeve is sorry, Egwene is just bringing Nynaeve back. To, and even so, there are, I've mashed issues that with a fan of the you know the book. But separate to that, if you're just trying to watch the show separate to the books, when did Egwene show any talent with healing on that level? There are instinctive weaves that people can accidentally stumble upon, but they're rare and there's only a couple that can happen. Mm -hmm. You need to be taught how to use the power. This is really significant. The books are very serious about this. But in the show, you can do whatever you want with the power if you just want to do it. And I Eve can hold back friggin' much in Shin, which is supposed to be this crazy power, but it's, you know, it's just a good therapist now. But she can do it because feelings. Red, oh gosh. Red is like... Tries to get Moraine to teach her. There are issues like trying to get Moraine to teach him. And Moraine, instead of saying, I can't teach you because you're a man, she's like, oh, I could, but I won't because if I teach you, you'll just become corrupted even more. And so that's implying that women could teach men how to channel. Yeah. And this show, the actual show, not external source material, has not even said the words, to my knowledge, Sidene or Sidar. They might have said Sidar, but they definitely haven't said Sidene. They have not established in the whole first season that the one power has two halves. Something as fundamental in the world building to the Wheel of Time as that has not even been mentioned at all in this entire first season. That is not by accident. They, they did not forget this. They willfully and purposefully avoided it to keep those words out of the show to even establish the one power has two halves. Okay, but why would they do that? Exactly. Then that's the next question. Why? This is an actual, purposeful, meaningful choice that they made to do to not have the, the, the one power be depicted as two halves at all in the entire first season. Why do you think they do that? Why? We invite our audience to just think about that. It's, Why? it's blatantly obvious. It's ponder it in your mind. But just, yeah, consider that for a moment. So, like, can't teach him anything. Like, can't, like even Yoda. Yoda didn't just say to him, just reach out with your mind. Feel the force. Why can't you just say, like, okay, you need to feel like you're grabbing him and, like, strengthening his chains. Like, she can't tell him anything. Anything, anything. Yeah. And then she just basically says, you'll be, it implies, you'll be able to intuit whatever you need to do. Once you draw on enough of the one power. It's like riding a bike. Oh, it's so <laughs> it's dumb. Like yeah, like, like riding a bike. It's like, <laughs> it's like a, this show is establishing the one power is just, you use it and you, you don't need training. You just do what you need to do. And she's basically... She gives him a Sa Angriol, which can multiply his power by a hundred. I think she even says a hundredfold, yeah. A hundredfold, right? Which make it as strong as a katana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really can't believe how mm. she's giving an untrained guy who's barely touched the one power something of insane and he he, he doesn't know how to... like. Wait, there's a difference between just channel the one power and then weaving it, ca essentially casting a spell. Right, yeah. And so if you draw on the one power and you don't weave it into a spell, essentially, you would burn yourself out. You'd, oh, you'd cause a random effect, like something really bad, like seriously happened. That's why, you know, in training in the books, they're all very serious about doing it properly, step by step. Brain just gives him friggin' a nuke times a hundred. It's just like, go to do what you need to do with it. And yeah. I went, no training on here you go. I love it. Like, male channelers, they're incredibly dangerous. They'll kill everyone they love. By the way, here's a force multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. They did ask if uh, Rad managed to give that back, by the way. Rad. Or if he just wandered off with it. I think he did. just walked off. Wandered off with it. Did he even use it? Yeah, he did. He, 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 is, uh, he is, um, oh, okay, I'm so yeah. annoyed. He held it out in front of you, almost offering it to the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was like... <laughs> uh, th there are hunting. so many issues. Um, there are a lot of issues in terms of the changes they made with the book. For instance, they basically... The Eye of the World doesn't exist. They just renamed the Dark One's prison the Eye of the World in this. The Eye of the World, like, um, they just go to the Dark One's prison, essentially. And it, and they replace what the Eye of the World was supposed to do with a Sa Angriol, which is like, sure, like, it, it underplays how powerful the Eye of the World was supposed to be. But then she just whips out one of the most insanely powerful Sa Angriols. There are Sa Angriols in the book that 
approach this level of power, which I can increase someone's power into insane levels, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? You can kind of imagine they come in gradually. People need to learn how to use them. There's one point where a, a good character and bad character are fighting over a Sangriol, and they basically cause the entire world to start to shake. Like, well, the whole city that they're in, and then, then anyone who can even touch the power, or, or, or they're like, sent, well, if they touch the male side, they can send to the, like, Holy crap, I'm sensing enough power to cause mountains to melt. What the hell is going on, right? And so these Sangriel are really important. In fact, they're so powerful that some of the main characters say, we better not use them <laughs> because we could destroy the world with them. Hey, Shad, here, take a nuke. <laughs> here, here, here. And then they give it to a guy who's barely Shad at all, doesn't know how to do it, and he's like... Yep. This... And look... There, like I said, there were issues, massive issues in terms of the changes, and one, not only the changes being worse than what they had in the book, they just stuck with the book, they would have had a great thing, but then the changes they're making for no good reason at all, mm. and on top of that, the changes they're making that are literally insulting and just desecrating the book material. There are some things that are... <sighs> should, we, should we get into the... But, but what I want to do before we... Because when we go chronologically through the things we notice, mm. we'll be getting to book changes and things... I want to quickly jump on some of the massive broken things of this episode that stand irrespective to your enjoyment of the books. i am kind of already touched on a number of them here and there, okay? But one of the biggest, unbelievably, bafflingly dumb, stupid things in this show, and what I was laughing is that they actually had someone point out this problem and then they're just like, man, whatever, right? It's, what the hell is Moraine's plan with Red? It is... I'm going to take this novice, this guy who barely channels, give him a nuke times 100, and just, good luck! <laughs> like, <laughs> good luck. I'll count it on you. I, and the, um, the dark one, this is like, it, it shouldn't, this isn't a spoiler if you're only wanting, wanting to watch the show, but you can kind of pick it up. Do you think that's the dark one? No. It doesn't look like the dark one. It doesn't seem like it was defeated pretty easily. Mm. The thing is, in the book, they actually have the same kind of thing, and this is one of the only things, where they wanted to make you think this person visiting in their dream and who they meet at the um, uh, at the Eye of the World is the Dark One, mm. but it's actually not, and you can kind of figure it out it's not. It, this individual is someone who speaks on behalf of the Dark One, so much so that he actually sometimes speaks, I am the Dark One, and, I, and he likes to pose it to freak people out and all that stuff. But, but he no. has magic. He has magic, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is he the Dark One or not? Uh, no, he's not. Also, why is his magic not black? Ah, uh, well, that's actually... Uh, there's a reason why. They're, they're like, okay. He, he, his magic isn't supposed to be tainted. Hmm. You'd think of anyone to have tainted magic be the guy who tainted the magic. Yeah, but see, it's the Dark One who tainted it, and so he can uh, grant his special servants to not actually touch the taint when they grab the, um, the male side of the power, which they haven't established in the show. Okay. Sidene. Um... I, I, I still can't believe they haven't established that. I, uh, they've, and you have to go out of your way to not mention it. To ignore it. Because this is a fundamental... Like, they've talked about going crazy, the, the, the taint, everything, but then they have not explained why it doesn't affect women, like the actual mechanics. All they said is that men did it, and uh, one power, not the, the, the half of the one power the men were using, Sidene, just the one power got cursed, and now whenever men touch it, they will go crazy, and also... Leandrin goes far as to say that it's men make men who make Maybe. the power filthy. Yeah. We've got a super chat. Um, wow. Oh, but... to read it. No, we've we, passed a thousand viewers. Sorry, what? We've passed a thousand viewers. What? Viewers. Hey! Hello! Welcome! That's awesome! This is a breaking new grounds here! <laughs> yeah. Um, but we will we'll save the super chats okay. for last. But thank you for everyone who's super chatting. We just, that was, we saw a very Since generous the one. Well, thank you very much. Um, and so... What is the plan, right? And then this, uh, whoever's posing as a dark one, I know who it is, I don't want to spoil anything, appears, and he basically braces, oh, what is your plan here? Like, mm. do, do you know what you're going to do? And he even says something that is an objectively, like, valid criticism. The last loose there and came with, like, a hundred eyes and eye. You're just coming with, with, with one normal woman eyes and eye? Like, do you really think you're going to take on the dark one with this? Mm. And... That's like, what I was actually like, yeah, that's a very true criticism. Even I was expecting the power of friendship and to have him <laughs> show up. But no, we didn't even get that. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I am so glad my prediction is wrong, okay? Mm. They are establishing, it seems like, that Rand is the true dragon. Good. Thank goodness. 
doesn't redeem the show in any like what we see is so dumb. They're just taking one turd off the turd pile. And so I think they were trying to justify Moraine's plan that instead of having like a hundred male Aes Sedai to go, she has a Sar Angriol that gives them the power of the equivalent of a hundred things. Mm. The thing is though, do you think they didn't have Sar Angriol back in Lucerne's time? And do you think it's also been pointed out in chat that it wasn't specified if it was for men or women to use. It was That's just us and Grill. Oh, you're right! Because what if Moraine can use that same Sangriol, there's no division in the one power. Because this is what I mean. People are saying the external material, the little shorts, have said, like, no, 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 you can't use them as canon for this show. You can't. Okay? I watched uh, them. They're completely different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I haven't, but what, you said they were good. They were really good because yeah. they felt like the novel, the, the books. They just do that. That's the thing. I was watching them. Was like they look good. The animation style is like very. Yeah. It's very star wise, but like the feeling, it feels like it's from the books because I listen to the audiobook now. <laughs> it feels like one to one ratio with that. You watch the show, and it's like a completely different studio head, and everyone's isn't done it, like. Isn't it funny that you've got all the people with talent that have read the books on YouTube? The retards are given millions of dollars to make TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> and like, but they yeah, claim to know the books, yet they oh, basically no. dump on it. Well, the them. three minutes of like origin stories gives me more mm. feeling and world building than like a whole hour of the show and see this is the thing a show should not have to rely on external material to yep. make sense if it no. does it's broken especially if it seems like what the show is saying and implying seems to be outrightly contradicting certain elements of this external material yep. and the fact that they haven't even said Sidene in the show if your if your story needs patches <laughs> then it's a broken story yes <laughs> I can't... And so, no, the thing that people will be saying... Well, when we first started viewing, I think a lot of our audience understood that, yes, this is a valid point, and few have brought it up since, but that was originally I was saying, oh, they did mention it here or there. I think there's, like, a separate image of um, uh, Pardon Fane holding a, a leaf, the, the leaf that lets you enter the ways. It wasn't in the show. If you wanted the show to make sense, you probably would have shown something yeah, that indicated yeah. how Pardon Fane used the ways without channeling. There weren't any leaves on the actual structure. Yeah, exactly. Well, where was the leaf on the structure, right? Again, trying to make fix plot holes with external material which just shows there are broken plot holes in the show otherwise you wouldn't need to rely on these other things mm -hmm. to make sense you know okay. what they could have done to have the show make sense follow the book yeah oh, you know, <laughs> and so Moraine's plan going back to right right it's like instead of 100 men who are trained they're, they vastly know how to use the power and they're really all, they're all really strong and they probably have their own siren girls and everything like that mm -hmm. Moraine is her plan give this guy basically doesn't know how to he even says he's like could you teach me your finger two before going he's nah, like nah you'll figure, so. it you'll figure it out by the way here's a new times 100 <laughs> gee thanks you... and remember <laughs> safety first <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unbelievably dumb so she has no plan at all and that's one of the central themes of the show and she thinks because she says this isn't the last battle, it's only the first, which meant on her way there, she thought this was the last yeah. battle. Hundred men go to the thing versus just Moraine and Rand with a sangre. Oh, well, you, to be fair, I it's, can't believe it's, it. it's woke of time, so one woman is equivalent to a hundred <laughs> men. Just saying. Oh, it's, it's so dumb. And you're watching them, I was like, gee, I can't believe it. And then when the fact that she actually thinks of the last battle and there's been no proper build up to it or signs or anything, the only thing that she kind of says is an extra sign that the Dark One is, you know, getting free, is that the blight has been growing faster. Mm. But boy, if the Dark One is actually going free, you'd be, it's apocalypse time. The world is nowhere near that level yet. This is why the books made sense, because you know what the books didn't, they didn't say the Dark One's getting free. <laughs> what did they say? They're just saying, he's going to do something to the eye of the world that might be bad, let's try and go there to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> makes more sense. Makes a lot more sense. And because we're going there, I might need to, you know, all the Tavira and that, you know. Yeah, the well, we actually we've. <laughs> to be fair, uh, the Admiral in the seat did have a bad dream. Yeah, exactly. She bad had... dreams have meaning. The, he, yep. <sighs> and again, contradict. There's a big contradiction where they're saying the Dark One is really weak, mm. yet Moraine says that he's growing stronger, and we have to, and the Blight is, and so he would have to be growing stronger to be able to break free, yet. Swan said he's weak and is at the eye of the world. And it's like, this isn't, again, contradicting their own. And that ruins stakes. Mm. Is he supposed to be weak or is he supposed to be strong? I think I'm seeing now why I don't like the show, Shad. Because <laughs> the stakes are so confusing. Exactly. They don't establish anything serious and then stick to it like it's a rule. They just pff, no. change whatever they want. Yeah. Okay. And so, all right. 
that's the first major, major fundamental thing that's broken in this episode. But then there's this whole battle where the Trollocs just appear out of nowhere. Yeah. Did Moraine and um, uh, and Rand run into any Trollocs at all entering the Blight? And it seems like a pretty straight line. They, she even looks back at one point and sees the Trollocs running, so it's like, where did they come from? Well, they run in a line so they can hide their numbers. Lan also <laughs> manages to get through without He's, seeming to have encountered any. I, I have a note of that as well, is that... The Trollocs, they, first they establish that they're going, and then the Trollocs appear behind them, that they disappear out of nowhere. But once they establish the Trollocs are now invading, Lan just seems to walk past them. Like, he just teleports. Well, he can teleport. Well, he can teleport, Shad, <laughs> you're right. That's, just, just sees the Trollocs, hello. <laughs> <laughs> that's, his, that's his teleport word. <laughs> By the way, there's a lot of rage about Loyal, I have to say. Oh, yes, I... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm not sure if they're gonna stick with it or it's a fake out. Because what we saw, like, you know, this is a classic show thing. He's been stabbed. It's at the end of the episode. He might still survive. It looked like they were trying to his make. Legs are he's dead. But if they kill oh, wait, Loyal, yeah, they can I'll... bring back anyone now. Well, exactly. No, I just just get a great to you. Even if he's dead, a great will bring him back. Come back to me again. Stakes. We're supposed to worry if Loyal, like, one, if he is dead, I will be hitting the roof. Is one of the, he, like, Loyal is legend, he's through the, so how could they kill him? So, which really means is that he's probably not going to be dead because they want to, you know, make you invest. It's like, oh, you're, you're worried he's dead. When you really, it's like, well, they can bring anyone back from the dead. And the fact that Loyal's an established character, the, again, stakes. Yeah, literally all of these people like, could die. Now death care. isn't going to mean spit. Like, we see Loyal at the brink of death, and my money is that he's not going to be dead in season two. They'll just bring him back, which means, how am I supposed to be invested in anyone possibly dying? They're, they're also mentioning how it was the Shader Logoth dagger. That stabbed him? Well, then Loyal should be a hundred... There's no way he could come back from that. In the books, the Shadar Logoth dagger, mm -hmm. right? If you cut someone with a nick... They basically then, the poisons that they go black and bulbous and just like in this pussy, pustular black mess and die. Like well, we didn't in the show, so well, there's hope. Well, they're, they're probably subverting what the dagger does now because have they read the books? No. And like, look, I know I get one or two things wrong, but fundamental, like really important things like what the dagger does, Insta you're not going to miss that if you read the books. No. <laughs> they did. Gosh. They've missed quite a bit, Shad. And, oh, I hate it. It's so dumb. All right. So, yeah. Other, again, fundamental problems about the, the, the Trollocs just seem to appear out of nowhere and they just teleport past willy-nilly, whatever. Mm. They don't establish that um, there's a real big problem with... Uh, um, what's the Gap's name? Uh, the, the, the Gap of... Tarwin's Gap. Tarwin's Gap. That, you know, uh, there's a problem there because uh, Algomar is like, we can always defend... And then, of course... You were right, my sister. I was wrong. It's all my fault. This is happening because Algomar is an idiot because he didn't see all the warnings and didn't... And again, because you can't have... Like, in the books, Algomar was constantly asking for extra help. Yeah. And, like, when Moraine appears, he's like, could you help us? We need... Like, you know, but he's also willing, I will give you some of my best lenses to help you out. And so Algomar is this great guy. No agenda. No agenda here. Yeah, and in this, in this iteration, Algomar is an idiot that had warning, that didn't listen to it because of his arrogance and led to the fall of... Um, Tarwin's Gap. Well, did it though? Well, this is the thing. So, this is book versus show thing, but it's again, it's make, like it makes you see, why did they make this change? Guess who defeats the Trollocs in Tarwin's Gap in the book? In the book? In the book. Was it him? Guess, uh, it wasn't, but. I don't know. It was Rand. It was Rand. It was Rand. Rand. He, he gets to the Eye of the World. The Eye of the World in the books is a pool of pure, uncorrupted Sidene and gets all this crazy power and, and it's uncorrupted. And so one, he uses it to defeat who he thinks is the Dark One. It's not. But then he has this crazy power and, he's, and he starts to accidentally teleport without knowing what he's doing because it's so overloaded. It's not, it's, and this is the thing. He didn't know what he was doing and it was all by accident. In the book, it's like... Nynaeve wants to heal... Uh, sorry, Egwene wants to heal Nynaeve and she just does it. Like, it, it's not this random thing that's happening. And so it's teleporting and then he appears in Tywin, Tywin's Gap and there's this army of trolls and like, holy crap! And he wipes them out, right? That would have been awesome! Would have been friggin' awesome! But no, we can't have a man do that, can we? Who has to save everyone in this show? Strong women! Woman! Man. Gee! Who could have predicted it? 
I feel robbed. I predicted. For a really good <laughs> I predicted everything. I was saying it sarcastically. Honestly. Who could have <laughs> predicted this? Yeah, right. So again, like this show is dead set against letting these male characters really like save people. Yeah, because he just left afterwards. Then he just he left. Just, oh, I'm I'm I gotta go. Later. Don't tell them. I have I mean, to go now. My planet needs. And like, me. think about Perrin. I so pissed. Oh. Right. There was this perfect moment where Perrin could have actually shown some friggin' balls! He picked up an axe! He was ready to do something! And then what does he do? He stands there like a friggin' moron! Lets them walk away! And he's just like, Ugh! Why have the leaf shot? Why have the leaf? I can't, I can't stand it! You could have at, like, at least given him something! Let the Fades have a trollic or two helping him out that he could have tried to fight and kill off. No! Instead, you actually have him hold an axe Watch the enemy, you know, you've just killed Loyal, you're not raging or anything, you're just standing there like a moron, and they just walk away and you let them leave, you pansy pussy! He's not a wolf, he's a friggin' chihuahua! And that's still going, being too generous for this absolute pathetic, oh, weak, cowardly moron. So the showrunners, they just got- And this thing, people's like, Shad, if he attacked him, he would've died. Yeah, I'm cutting you off. Shut up! <laughs> they would've attacked him, they would've died! And look- even if he tried to do something heroic and then got injured or defeated, I'm not saying he should have been able to take on a fade at this time. That's why I was saying bring in a troll or two, let him fight. Mm. At least let him try and... He's a wolf. Let him go crazy, not see reason, and attack, and then have to be stopped by other people. Give him something unless he stands there like... This time he just stands there like a wet rag and lets them leave after they've killed Loyal in front of you and all these other great guys. Go oh, no, sorry. I've forgotten what I was going to say. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. <laughs> you're, you're annoyed? What? What do you That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, if you remember it, try again. Oh. Uh, like, I thought they could, they might have been redeeming Perrin when it's like, he kicks the chair, it's like, the way of the leaf is wrong. And I'm like, okay, they might be actually having Perrin have some balls here. And then right at the end, like, nah, we'll take those off you, Perrin. You don't deserve it. That was the joke I was going to make. What? I was going to say, the showrunners, they've got Perrin and they've just... <laughs> yep. Oh, and Perrin's one of my favourite characters and they're sponsoring him so much! Mm. Oh, this is what I mean about they are desecrated. Like, they are crapping on the original. So they have made these, these uh, you know, the original books was about three male heroes, essentially, that were helped. And look, they were helped in a big way by some of the other characters. But it was a coming of age story about three young guys becoming heroes, essentially. Mm. They've, they've, not, they've butchered it. Not only that, they've gone out of their way to make these guys look incompetent, cowardly, pathetic, whinging, whining, wet rags, and one full-on blown evil with darkness in him. Like, the contempt they are showing for these characters, these male characters specifically, is unbelievable and obviously intentional. Obviously. Obviously? I don't know, Shad. That sounds like a bit of a conspiracy theory. I mean, like, do you really think they'd go out of their way to ruin the show, <laughs> to make the men look awful, to make all the women just overpowered, you know, Mary Sue's? Do you really think they'd do that all in the, the you know, for political purposes? Would they really do that? Would they? Would they? Uh, we'll let you ask More them. importantly, would someone, I don't know, in this room, have been saying that for the past, you know, uh, since since the show uh, was shown on Twitter. Who said you were wrong? Well, I mean, no one said I was right. <laughs> <laughs> I said I needed to see the evidence before I'll call them out on it. Like the actual, I don't, look, there was warning signs. I don't. Um, anything you want to share from chat quickly, hun? While there's a lot. Uh, just a quick question for chat. A couple of you have mentioned that there's a bit of a hum in the microphone. Is that for everybody? And which? Oh, mm. I'm going to tell which. Yeah, I have to put up with it. People. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, like, tell us if it's too too loud, and we'll see if we can do something. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, fundamental broken thing, the next one, okay? And look, I know as I talk about it, I get distracted by other issues that I hate that are related to the book and everything. Okay, um, so, massive Trolloc army attacking, they said between five and 10,000. Big army, okay? Uh, this is one of the biggest ones that, biggest ones we've ever faced. We've only ever faced like a thousand, and that was a really hard battle. So, what would you then think to do to, to defeat them? So, if you have female channelers that could link and potentially have enough to do some damage, that would probably be your first move before sending all these great guys to sacrifice and die. Yeah. You might want to just try your biggest guns first. ESPECIALLY IF YOU HAVE THE FRIGGIN' HORN OF VALIA! Yeah, why do they just... 
Oh, oh no, we have to give it to the tr like you have you're saying that the whole world might be overrun by this army. Like Uncle Mark goes on this big speech about how all, all the effects of what can happen in this world. Yep. But our sacrifice will be it's like if you've got the horn, mate. And you've said that's... Didn't they say that's how they defeated one of the other last armies? By using the horn? Is what? there any... Is there Look, a... don't even get me to where it breaks the law about the Horde of Valyria. But if we would just go on what this show is established, the Horde of Valyria is something I can call other heroes that anyone... is that obvious, Seems like anyone can blow here, right? And uh, they had that there. Algamar, instead of wasting all this time talking about armor and all these things with your sister and everything, why don't you just grab the horde, mate? You had a tool that could wipe everyone. But instead, they go, they essentially go up to commit suicide when they had two massive options to wipe out this army, and they don't choose to use either! Is there any, like, limit to how often you can blow the horn? So, book law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when uh, the horn. If, if no one has blown it, there's no one alive who has blown it, all right? Anyone can pick it up and then blow on the horn, all right? Mm -hmm. What happens is it literally calls, like, the spirits of all, uh, you know, these dead, massively strong, great heroes and everything, but the horn then gets linked to the person who blew it, and they can only ever blow it again to call the heroes. If anyone else blows it while he's alive, nothing happens. Uh -huh. If you want to use the horn while he's alive, you have to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so somebody that's on the dark side could blow it and they would come to fight for them. But if somebody on the light side oh, that's it, it would come to fight for them. That's why Pat and Fane took it. And Perrin did nothing. What's that? Okay, goodbye. Hun, did they did he steal the horn in book two or just Matt's dagger? The dagger was in the chest with the horn, okay, so okay. he had both, but it was locked. He did he access? Okay, because I know because the thing is, if if they could have accessed the horn in the book, they would have blown it, right? Because um, there's a really significant thing, and when the first person blows that horn, that um, uh, you know, in book two, something very important happens with it and stuff. There is so much law broken about the horn just being buried under the. Because you know where they found the horn in the books? Where? It was at the bottom of the pool of the Eye of the World. So, you know, the pure Sidene? Uh, yeah. When Rand uses all the Sidene and drains it... They find it at the they bottom? They find the horn. They also find one of the original um, dragon banners of Luz Theron Telamon there. Uh, and, like, and so, the thi like, this place that breaks the law of the books is so fundamentally because every uh, however many years like, it's not every year but every they have this big event called the hunt for the horn where all people across the world go on this big crusade to try and find the horn it's this <laughs> thing of myth and legend i put out so many fake horns just a mess of people but they're saying not only does no, someone know where the horn is they're saying they actively used it not i don't know i forget how long ago when they used it but that means everyone in the world would freaking know where the horn is like you're not going to be able to use that thing and pretend it didn't happen or no one gonna mention it all at the like the books are also really good about rumors spreading if something serious happens everyone like it's the news chain they just like talk about it everywhere so they are telling me someone blew on that freaking horn the very horn of valia and no one else knows about it because I reckon they're going to still try and do the hunt for the horns. Like, she was like, someone just used it not long ago. And you're saying, no. -uh. It made great sense that no one could find the horn everywhere because it's at the bottom of the eye of the world. And the eye of the world is this mythical place that its location legitimately shifts and changes. And oh. you can only, like, find it when you need it. I, and so Moraine explains this, that you have to, you know, really need it. Have a true, I forget it was true in Ted or something. But basically... Uh, you, uh, if you're meant to find it, you'll walk to a, you know, a general location, then you'll end up walking into the eye of the world, basically. You have reached your destination. Yeah, and so they've broken it, uh, broken so, so much. But in the show, even if you go irrespective of the book material, they literally had the Horn of Valyria, and Aes Sedai's are ready to link, and literally, the Aes Sedai's won the battle. I, I, sorry, they're not actual Aes Sedai's, they were just female channelers, and there might have been one Aes Sedai, but the sister wasn't really an Aes Sedai, and they were the girls. Okay, but, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Episode 4, we saw like a, a full I encampment. I have been corrected, by the way, that apparently the Shadow can't blow the horn. Oh, really? If fight for the light, it says. But I wanted to, I thought they, I, I thought they, I that thought was a risk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. Anyway, episode four, we had an entire encampment of Aes Sedai fighting off just regular dudes. And they, you know, <laughs> a few of them died and stuff like that. But, you know, four non Aes Sedais. Well, look, Nynaeve and Egwene are pretty powerful. Yeah. They they think, yeah, um, they're not being true to the powers. I, but the thing is, the power can get to that level that can wipe out armies. 
and uh, they were trying to say that she was burning herself out drawing out too much uh, mm. which is what how she was able to push herself to that level it was weird because usually if you're gonna link you need the strongest sister to link well you would want the strongest sister to link there. she's basically the weakest she could barely channel a whiff but anyway she leads the link and she gets all the other sisters powers and i can't remember the exact mechanics of the book but when i'm watching i'm like this isn't re and making sense and if she's drawing too much is she gonna burn out the others or like because the level that she would need to draw to burn out obviously would be changed when she's linked and so you would think then if she's got all their you know their powers linked together she would only be able to burn out if she burns out everyone at the same time because it's you would have to draw more power than they can collectively chew yeah. uh, a channel and then that would affect everyone but then you have two sisters, like two channelers burning out earlier, and she burns out, and then uh, and then the level of difference between Egwene and Nynaeve is orders of magnitude from the, this lady yeah, who, who is who is leading the thing. And so, if if burning out is based upon your power level and the weakest. Uh, this isn't how it works in the book to my knowledge but this is how, what the show is depicting mm. that the weaker people burn out first the lady leading it should have burnt out way before it even approached the levels that would have risked Egwene or Nynaeve because they are so much more powerful than her mm. if she wasn't even powerful enough to become a sister that means she's really weak because they let some weak sisters become like weak channels become Aes Sedai so she is like barely you know light a candle um, power level right and then they're showing that when she burns out, not even a grain of like right next to her. That's not how you're showing the power levels should work here. And so again, no consistency. There has been a couple of comments saying that mm -hmm. only the one leading the the lynch group can burn out when she burns too I, much, and then it disintegrates the link. Okay, see that would make more sense as well. But no, they want conflict of the other people in the link burning out, and then they're not consistent with whatever they're trying to establish. They don't know what they're doing. If you want conflict, you need to figure out what the rules are and let's stay true to the rules. And that means we as the audience can intuit and expect, uh oh, this is serious because we know how the magic should be working. Then we can see where it's being pushed towards. The book was great. The books were great about that. They would establish what the rules were and then we would kind of get you no, know, like just by implication, if someone says we need to do this, right? And we as the readers already know how the magic work and then we could think, but if you do that, we know where that will lead to. That's a mm. bad thing. And then, of course, if you be true to it, it can lead to that bad thing or approach it and you've got stakes and suspense and you yeah. this. We don't even freaking know what's going on. People are burning out. We don't know why Nynaeve and Egwene should be because they're more powerful. Is it the one leading it should only be? A, it's a mess. It's another mess. But anyway, so those are the main fundamental broken things of this episode. And, it's fun, and that's what the episode is built on. Like, the plan Moraine is doing to go to the thing, um, and the battle in Tywin's Gap, and the fact that, literally, they've, all the people who fought in that fortress committed suicide when they had two big things that they could have used and say... <laughs> well, I just think, and, Shad, how would that conversation have gone? No, sister, I am a man, I know what is best. I will go and fight, and you will stay here, because I'm a man, and I know what is best. That's how it would have gone. No, because... In this world, they know people who channel... Like, if they could channel to that level... Ah, hmm. oh, Algamar's not an idiot. Feels like... In the show he is. I know, but he's like, you're our biggest gun. How about we use that and save as many lives as possible? No, because that will make sense, Shad. No, we no, because the women, like... The women can't fight with the men. They can go stay back and protect the city. Us men need to go. It's like they they misunderstand masculinity. They think a truly strong man would never let a woman fight at all. No, no. If that woman could freaking save thousands of lives, I have no problem letting her lead. Yeah. <laughs> like, go on. You, you're the big gun. We'll be there to back you up, all right? Well, when you put it like that, I'm of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It makes right? perfect sense. I mean, ah, and it was like, no, women have to stay by. Now, the thing is, historically, there was precedent for it because women were usually weaker and so they would usually stay back to protect the castle and stuff. But if they're the only magic but, users... But if they're the biggest guns in this world, it's like, you've got thousands of men you're risking your lives when you could have just let them lead and, like, take care of the job for you. And the whole, oh gosh, the whole battle scene with the Trollocs. What is the Trollocs' plan? Attack this wall with pick... Like, we saw them literally with picks trying to break down. If that's their plan... How they like? They don't show how the trollers get past. All they have is like them climbing, climbing the wall. Got throwing. demolished. Did it actually? No. They. I thought they. We see them running through the wall. That they broke through it somehow. Yeah, but when I remember when it showed a shot from like the the girl's perspective, I didn't see the wall there. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just Minecraft <laughs> that thing down. They Minecraft it down, picks it in. <laughs> That's not how battle sieges work. Just let you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, there were some cases with sapping where you would dig underneath. This would be a process that would take days to weeks, like, a, or sometimes even a, a long process. But when you have a diamond pick. I'm but gonna... hey, when you got, you know, monsters with picks, they could just... Yeah. <laughs> Especially they have the, the shade. He could just enchant them using an enchanter block. Oh, I can't believe it. So the whole siege thing is nonsensical. I mean, Agumar, he gets speared through the chest. Why weren't they using spears? Well, they were using crossbows. I like that they're using no, crossbows. I know, yeah. but they could have just like, oh, they're climbing the walls to, to, to peek yeah. through the holes. Let's get spears and jump but, them back. Jump my jump. point is that Agumar's armor does nothing, of course. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, the spear straight goes through. straight through. But I mean, it was a big spear, granted. Like, depends how much force it's behind, but still, it's like, oh, gosh. And of course, Algomar dies, you know, because he was a stupid man. It was all his fault, so he deserved it. Didn't my he? only regret is not telling my sister I'm smarter than her again. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put past the show, oh. So, just separate from book, this show, this episode is awful. Like, the logic behind it, how things play out, is just terrible. Wait, 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 wait. The logic behind it? That implies there is some shad. Well, they try, like, this was their logic. Um, we can defeat the Dark One, Rand, because you can use the power, and I have a thing that'll increase you to 100-fold, and you're just like, I, I point you in the same direction, and you'll do it. But that's their weak, pathetic logic, right? But because if you really feel that, Rand doesn't know how to use the power yet. How do you, like, you're just going off faith that he's going to do the right thing. Mm. You don't know if he's going to burn himself out, accidentally nuke a city, or any number of things, right? But no, he'll just do it. Because <sighs> it'll just come over him. It's awful. It is really, really awful. Uh, okay, so now we're going to go into a point by point breakdown. And if we hit anything I've already covered, well, we'll skip over that. But those are the, because we're not just beginning the review now. The review's been going for a while about the more fundamental broken things. Um, I want to clarify one thing that I said last time because I think some people have misunderstood. Lan, ha when uh, in the books, Lan does sleep with women, women, right? Lan does sleep with women. He does sleep with, uh, like, he sleeps with women, right? Okay. But getting into a serious relationship and letting a woman fall in love with him so deeply that he loves, that's what he would never do because of what he expects of his future. Because duty is heavier than a mountain. Yes, okay. That's why he would never sleep with Nynaeve because he knows in doing one, he actually loves Nynaeve and knowing doing that, she would be so attached to him. This is why, not, like, Lan basically, he, he sh tell in the books, he tells her he loves her, he gives her a very special token, and then basically ends it. Tries to anyway. It was so cringe when he says this in the show. Oh. Like, you are as beautiful as the sunrise. You are a lioness. That was they, a they took <sighs> lines from the book, and it doesn't fit because now the context is different. But they are the most cringe, cheesy lines. No, I've no, no. Ever the heard. lines are great when they're delivered in the book. Like I yeah, love the, the lioness books. The, sorry, the lioness. Um, line in the book was great. So I loved it. It's like you were a lioness. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. The moment great in the books, and this was awful. Yeah, I, I was out of place, and it was weird because it sounded like they they're hooked up, but then it, he's like saying, uh, "Whoever you pick, I will hate." And then oh my like, god, that was hang on. if he makes you laugh, I will love him. But like in that way, they haven't explained why why they're breaking up. It seemingly, or are they breaking up? Are they talking about just the man she's gonna bond as a ward? Like, there's no explanation. It's just. What are you guys It was very about? out of place, Shad, and I have to agree with Oz. Even if those lines were in the book, it was probably the cringiest thing. So it episode. came off as cringe. For me, I really. was just like, <laughs> I died of cringe. But Nynaeve's power will be back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because, oh, like, that, you know, the, um, for instance, the line where it's about the I can no more do that than the fish touch the moon. <laughs> <laughs> the fish, but my fish, <laughs> but my fish, right? <laughs> Turns out that is a line from the books. Mm. It's a line that Swan says in a completely different context that probably makes sense. Mm. I can't remember where she said it. And so someone actually tried to criticize us, saying criticizing thing in the show when it turns out uh, you know it's actually from the books. Every like so many of the comments are like, do you realize the context that actually criticizing it wasn't the line itself? Yeah. It was that that was his reason to not help his daughter take his daughter to the <laughs> White Tower. He's letting his daughter go for a thousand year or a thousand not year, a thousand kilometer whatever journey on her own where she might die. She asks why, and his reason is I can't do it because reasons because a fish can't touch it it's like using that line as that explanation is bafflingly stupid yeah. and it's and it ruins the line because it makes the line ridiculously dumb because what reason is making it physically impossible as impossible as it is for a fish to touch the moon for you to help your daughter out go on this really dangerous journey on her own to the white tower yeah i mean you I, just look like a scumbag dad who's just letting your daughter run off yeah and don't worry your house will still be burnt down when you get back yeah <laughs> 
Eric. That line in the book is mostly referred to a bird can't teach a fish to fly. Like a man can't teach a woman to Okay, so, and a woman can't teach a man to channel. So it's that used in sense. the exact context of something impossible. Like a woman can't teach a man to channel because the channeling process is so different. This is why that line when Moraine says I could channel, could teach you to channel, but I won't, it's like, hang on. No, no, Moraine, it should be literally impossible for you to teach him how to channel because it's so different for a man channeling to a woman. Again, and that's another troubling indication that they don't have side in and side R as two separate types in the show. Because if Moraine can teach him how to channel, that means they're using the one that's the same power. It's like, yep. oh, oh, oh. It's all very... <laughs> okay, so we get a, a, a flashback scene. Oh, my goodness. I... We, I had to pause the scene multiple times. And rewind it multiple times. <laughs> and rewind it multiple times. Because what happens in this scene is an atrocity beyond understanding in regards to the books. Like, I even busted out laughing. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I was like, because there is some howlers. So, what a way to just desecrate and twist what actually happened in the book mm. to fit a certain message or narrative in mm. here. So, instead of sealing the bore. So in the books, a woman finds a new source of power, mm -hmm. thinks it's a power that both men and women could use equally, and it's even stronger, and she leaves the thing to bore into this power, and it turns out it's the Dark One's prison. And so in the books, it's actually technically a woman's fault. I'm not saying that women bad by this, but I'm saying the show is so you know purposeful about trying to shift blame onto men that was the arrogance of men that you know um arrogance of men trying to save the say, world that, that was the arrogance of men that you know cursed the one power for men and everything so it's the show that's trying to put blame on a certain gender here so if you want to play that game well the books are actually you know it was a, first a woman that caused the problem okay and the men the male I said I they their job their, their mission was to seal the prison mm. In this flashback, it, they said just caging the Dark One. There's no reference to the hole in his prison or the boar or anything like this. That the men are just trying to do something. One, to cage the Dark One. And the reason why she, ac she accuses Luce Theron, the reason why he wants to do that is for his own pride. So they want to cage the Dark One to serve his pride. Holy crap. Well, Shad, don't you know those guys who went over to die in Normandy? They just did it because of their pride. Oh, Love country? No. They didn't do it with their families. so disgustingly uh, disrespectful to the source material of what that was actually happening. And also, even in the context of the show, the dark they need to cage the dark one why is he free we're like there's no context but the dark one they can cage the dark one and they're trying to say it's arrogant to do so and th they don't say that the women had a different plan or anything like that but if you look at well the, the book context is that the dark one is getting free because someone bought into his prison and now there's a big problem and so they need to cage him for that reason and it wasn't arrogance it was like holy crap the world is gonna die at the end Every, we need to do something now I can't remember exactly from the books but I think the women didn't want to help him because they thought it wouldn't work. Mm. Okay. Um, uh, and so, chat, you can correct me if that's uh, the right there, way. There's a few comments saying men and women were working together. Working together. Okay. So I can't remember exactly, but it could have been men and women working together to do the job. But it was the men that actually went to the prison to um, cage the Dark One, and no female I said I went with him. And so I think there was a conflict as to how to fix the problem between the men and the women and the men took the proactive thing to do the thing uh, to actually save the world and of course they ended up paying the ultimate price they were went insane and uh, broke the world as a result mm. but they did technically the world, the world is, <laughs> didn't go as bad as it would have went as the dark one got free and so they technically succeeded but also you know failed in their success but the show is trying to twist this completely around and uh, they're uh, trying to uh, oh and what's crazy what I'm, I couldn't believe this right this is in in the show actually that there's a female I said I who actually then warns him that if you do this you're gonna taint the one source no one knew that that was gonna happen as a result mm. but now this woman she knew ahead of time if you do this you're gonna taint it, and it's gonna go all bad, and so... But they didn't know that tapping against one power would be, you know, the downfall. So, she was... 
And then he's like, you could actually expose the source to the Dark One. What if he touches it and corrupts it? It's like, what? Again, book difference, okay? And the book is objectively better, and you can look at the difference to determine this. And then we see this change. And then I was like, why did they make this change? Mm. They have this female, I said I, warning this male, I said I, if you do this thing before your own arrogance, you could, and then they actually go out of the way to make them aware of the potential problems beforehand. The male, I said I didn't know this that you could taint it and then he's going to go do it anyway to again justify the arrogant they actually want the men to appear arrogant for this sacrifice that they, they have literally twisted the source material for this purpose this is a change they are explicitly wanting Luz Theron to be arrogant and performing something really you know dangerous with the potential risking one source and all that stuff and that's the purposeful change so then the question is, why would they make this change? It's not for story, it doesn't make it better. Nope. Makes you wonder, right? I mean, and so then the next thing, this is the, like, oh. And then she's like, you and you and your men could throw us back thousands of years, right? How? And, how do, how you, do know you know that? Exactly. <laughs> you you don't. Your, you and your men can make a giant volcano that'll destroy the civilization. It's uh. oddly specific. Is this okay, and so now there's chat saying that there were two different plans, the women's mm-hmm. and the men's. That's what I thought, yeah. And but they didn't know what would happen to the power. Yeah, exactly. I, that they do, certainly certainly didn't know what would happen to the power. And so this next one, I nearly I, this is where this is where I lost it. You guys heard me when I was watching it because they are so intent to make the men look bad that they accidentally. M- <laughs> From what we show here, it's all the female Aes Sedai's fault and not the men, and they're not even aware that they did this. Luz Theron literally says, if you help us, we will succeed. And then she says, no, we will remain to pick up the pieces. She is literally saying, I am not going to help purposely to make you fail and then pick up the, she like by her saying no we, our choice instead of helping you is to remain ha- behind ensure that you fail and pick up the pieces that's the literal translation of what she says when she says when Lou Seren says if you help us we will succeed and then she says no we will remain behind to pick up the pieces she doesn't she does not contradict Lou Seren's statement of that the, she, they help would help like if they help they would succeed and by her not contradicting or challenging any way that's almost an unconscious acknowledgement that she agrees yes if we did help you you would succeed but I'm going to choose not to so you fail and I can pick up the pieces later this show literally now depicts they want to one make it seem like the me- it's the men's fault because they're arrogance and they accidentally without realising it make it Completely, not only accidentally the female Aes Sedai's fault, but intentionally their fault. Luce there literally says, if you help us, we'll succeed. They're like, no. And we, our preference between helping you and succeeding is to pick up the pieces afterwards. That's their preference. I was like, what? <laughs> She's not a good person. <laughs> That's a very... Like, but they're not aware of it. They think. They think that what they're saying with that scene is that, no, we're not going to help you because there's no way our help will help you succeed. But she doesn't say that. She doesn't contradict Blue Seren at all. The show thinks she's saying that. The, the, the show thinks that they're implying that there's no way to make this succeed. You're going to fail no matter what, even with our help. And so our only choice is to pick out the pieces. But because she doesn't contradict it, and the way it's delivered, it's literally saying that our preference is for you to fail and we're not helping you for the purpose of you failing and we'll pick up the pieces afterwards. That was his friend? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? Like, this show seems to go out of its way to ruin many of the male characters and then their intent to prop up all the females, they're so blinded and so incompetent that they also ruin the feminine like they literally said they want to put a feminist message in this and they're even ruining that or they're actually being too honest about what fem- <laughs> like extreme feminism is really after and they depict it accurately and it's horrifying or yeah, authoritarian and all about power and all that stuff and this sh- oh it's like if you really wanted to put it in a good light like you are depicting you've actually shown that the breaking now is all the female eyes and eyes fault and you're unaware of it and it's unbelievable would you say it's a real mask off moment Oh, I couldn't believe it. 
Uh, any <laughs> reaction from the chat? So, like, uh, there are quite a few comments saying that Brandon Sanderson's doing a live viewing at, at currently as well. He's, he's trying viewing to, it at the same time. He's trying to beat us at our own game. <laughs> I owe power to him. I no, I to... challenge him to combat. No, 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 that's fine. Oh, yeah, I was like, I couldn't believe it when I went, that came on. I was like, ah, oh, unbelievable. So, yeah, it's this also is, been commented about him being called the Dragon Reborn when he's I, supposed to that's be That's literally my next note. She calls him the Dragon Reborn, and I was like, shouldn't he just be the normal dragon at this point? He's not reborn. He's not reborn. <laughs> Maybe he was baptized. That's just I, a... Again, have, have, have they read the books? What are they, like, how aware are they of this source material? If they can make fundamental errors as bait, like, this is pretty darn basic. Dragon, he gets reborn. Rand is the Dragon Reborn because he's... Re uh, reborn, yeah. I mean... Uh, no, you're right. That. Ah, oh, gosh. I am wondering. So, does Rand have the soul of a black man now? Does he get like any cred? He, or... he probably is a soul brother. Yes. He's probably a soul brother now. I think. Wait, oh, I was going to ask something edgy, but uh, you probably <laughs> yes, so let's bad, yeah. let's cut because I. Wait, no, we're within regulation. No, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> look, to me, this is just a change. It doesn't make it better or worse. It's just a change. It feels like you know why they made the change, but I don't remember Louis Theron. You know, I, I think Louis Theron was pretty clear with his physical, his appearance and stuff. But anyway, the actor, the guy who's acting him, yeah, he could be a Louis Theron. Uh, but anyway, I. What I was surprised about was when they panned out the window and we and Wakanda now. Well, I liked I liked the depiction of the Age of Dreams. I think it's is it the Age of Dreams? Is that what it's like? The age when you know before is the, the breaking. Age of Legends. Age of Legends. It might be Age of Legends. Yeah, the magic is so crazy because uh, there is like a flashback to that um, time in uh, the books, and you see like flying ships. But they're all they're they're like civilizations built on the magic, essentially the one power, and it, and it, it looks sci-fi because of all the magic everywhere and stuff. And I kind of liked it's like, hey, that looks pretty cool. But it's just it, it kind of takes me out of it. I'm not Does gonna it? lie. It's like, oh, I'm in a fantasy universe now, I'm in a sci-fi universe. It, it took me out of it a bit. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, so. Now we see the blight, and uh, this is uh, back to the pickup of the last episode, and they're walking through. And so again, this is a difference between the book and the show. I'm not sure if this is like better or worse, but then again, so the blight, from my memory of the descriptions, was almost like a desolate wasteland, and there was occasionally trees, and you don't want to touch the trees. It's like basically, it's like don't go near anything. Uh, yeah, you're even dangerous just walking along the ground here, but it's a bit safer just walking on barren ground. Hopefully you don't step on any animal or anything, because all the animals are like poisonous, crazy things, and then there so are larger monsters. it's Australia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, Australia. you do not want to walk through Australia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are, it, this version of the Blight is like corrupted evil trees. And then of course, you know, it's like she says, don't touch anything. And then they're like touching trees. And then they trees. sit down. They sit they down. Rest. And they're just not consistent with Pushing the through rules. Pushing trees and, and vines. like, she tells him all the problems of the Blight when they're walking through the trees in the Blight. You'd think that would be just some essential information you'd share before you get And they're walking it. a long time up to that yeah. side. You might think, would you just silence the whole way? Or on the way, she's just like, know. by the way, Rand, don't touch anything. This place is really dangerous where we're going. Also, here's how to channel or something helpful but instead it's just <sighs> silence for the whole way there and uh, they're also missing the worms chat's reminding you yeah so those the evil big ones or the big worms i can't remember yeah the ones that kind of tunnel underneath and then come out and like oh yeah oh, there were crazy them. monsters in the blight yeah the blight just now sit is like something with bad ugly trees that spooky forest yeah. occasional dead body it's basically that like japan suicide forest really except <laughs> you go there to die on purpose all right, moving on. <laughs> and moving on. Uh, so yeah, she like. There's a scene with Perrin and a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> moving on, Oz. I'm moving on. I'm sorry. We said the words. There's a scene with Perrin uh, and and uh, Egwene talking about Rand. Mm. Still very weird with them. Yeah. But then, she him. she says, "I love Rand," and Perrin says, "I love him too." Now look. Oh, this is the polyamorous stuff the showrunner wants to explore. I don't know, but like, there was there's a conspiracy theory theory out there that Perrin actually doesn't like Egwene. His jealousy was for someone else. Oh, oh no! The showrunner said, "I'll make them gay." 
Uh, I don't know. It's not yet confirmed, but I heard this conspiracy before this episode dropped. And then there's this thing where Perrin says, I love Ram too. Now, look, of course, men can love other men in a platonic friendship way and stuff like that. But with the conspiracy theory that's out there and the proclivities and intents and opinions of the people making the show... I yeah. the, the thing about these these certain individuals on the political side is they'll openly tell you that we're at the point where they'll tell us their intentions, even if the plan is horrifying. Okay, they'll tell us the plan. Well, the showrunner's been pretty open about it. He said, like, it, look, I know there's context and stuff. I've already talked about it, yep. but the fact that he's willing to joke about it and do it so flippantly and easily, and happily, and that is already purpose, he's done it with characters already. I wouldn't yeah, put but it they past mix him. their lives with the truth. Yeah. Okay, so there's an interesting thing to just keep track of. All right, so then uh, uh, back to Rand and uh, Moraine. She says, the Dark One's strength is building. But I thought he was... Again, I pointed this out. But Swan said it's supposed to be weak. Yet his strength is, like, be consistent. Um, <laughs> so, Lan, Order. It's supposed to be this, like, really <laughs> confident guy. Okay. And, um... <laughs> so now it's basically established in the show Nynaeve is a better tracker than Lan it's like I wasn't tracking you I was tracking Moraine she has a tell you, <laughs> you're seriously telling me Lan wouldn't be able to track Moraine <laughs> now wait a minute but that's the implication Lan wouldn't be able to track Moraine unless Nynaeve told him this information Nynaeve is now a better tracker than Lan I'm not, like this is ridiculous in the books Nynaeve was good at tracking but she was not better at tracking than Lan like ah. Oh. What the hell could her tell possibly be? She leaves a she leaves a flower every like hundred yards. I don't know. Is it that time of the month? Who knows, right? But moving on. <laughs> I don't know. Look, we're moving on. <laughs> it's on the internet now, Shane. <laughs> we can't cut that out. You've got to be on your best behaviour. I I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. That one just slipped out. I'm sorry. But it does what like what is what would be a tell that land wouldn't be able to know. Well, they don't tell you because they can't think exactly. Of she puts a sign in the ground. <laughs> <I was there. laughs> Moraine, this way. <laughs> okay. Um. I think. Um. Land, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. The, again, this was the discussion between Moraine and. Uh, and Rand, and uh, again, it establishes that you have touched the one power, but do you have any idea what you're doing? Um, and yeah, and I was watching this like, yeah, can you teach Rand? No, and but anyway, we've covered it already. She, it establishes that she would be able to teach Rand, which really says something about if the powers are separated or not, but she chooses not to because of the things like, because it, it would just make him go crazy sooner. Mm. Don't go crazy that fast. Well, it's different between different people, honestly. Some people do go crazy faster. But the progression of Rand's craziness is uh, different. And I'll leave it at that. Oh, wait, what was that? He goes crazy. Thanks uh, for the spoiler, Shad. It's kind of implied. If you use the power, you go crazy. So I, didn't question... think, I, thought the, I, think, I thought that the dragon was meant to not go crazy. Uh, no, it's already in this show. This episode, Rand says, I felt that, you know, the taint, taint affecting me. So it's established in the show that he's going that way already. Okay. So not a spoiler, all right? I'll take your word for it. Um, so there's the dream sequence of Rand. Um, and Rand does something. He's like, this is a dream, and then he kills himself. I was like, okay, it's decisive. It gets the job done. I mean, lucky he was right. Too bad if he was wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, for a moment, I was like, what if he's wrong? Oh, uh, that's what true. What if they just killed Rand? <laughs> and they didn't, thankfully. But I, well, now we know that... how to offer it. It's like, hey, Rand, this is a dream. <laughs> you know how to get out of it if you want to. <laughs> If the dragon died, what would happen to the Dark One? Uh, well, I he mean... He would get stronger but weaker. Who would be there to stop him from breaking free, basically? Well, why doesn't... Why doesn't <laughs> that dude just convince him it's a dream again, get him to kill himself IRL? Well, that's... Yeah, right? Um... Alright, so we've covered the Sarangri old plan, and it's ridiculous giving him something so much power. I was like, do you want you both of you to die? It's unbelievable. Um, and she says, yeah, the fear, the adrenaline, once you embrace the power, you'll know how to use it. <laughs> okay. Yes, and uh, I wrote a note like, 
there's a difference between embracing the source and channeling it into a spell. No, especially but, for men and women, because isn't it embracing the source mm. women like literally embracing it, but then for men it's fighting it? Yeah, exactly. Men feel like they have to fight for control of the one power, and if they don't, it'll just burn them to pieces. But women, you need to submit to your, the power and uh, and let go. Uh, and so if a woman tried to teach a man how to channel in the books, they would teach them how to blow themselves to pieces and to kill themselves. Yeah. If a man tries to channel in the books the way a woman does, they would die instantly. Same with a woman. Or a woman just wouldn't be able to use the power. Right. If they were fighting it, they'd never be able to, you know, embrace the source. So... It's 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 not in the book. Like again, have they read the books? <laughs> just... No. Nope. So in the show, they have combined the Eye of the World with the Dark One's prison, which is like Shale Ghoul. Mm. Okay, which is really they basically just renamed Shale Ghoul the Eye of the World, and the Eye of the World is not in the show at mm. all. The Eye of the World was a separate thing, a pure pool of siding, and so this is supposed to be Shale Ghoul then, or the Dark One's prison. Which is weird, and actually, in the show, they're probably going to have Shale Ghoul separate, but it, lo it looked like he was at the Dark One's prison, didn't it? They went, they were going to the prison in the show? Am I the only yeah, one? That, pretty sure. That's what it, the show yeah, felt I, like I it was they depicting. Said the Dark One's prison at the Eye of the World. That's what it felt like, yeah. yeah. That's what they said, isn't it? Because if this is the Dark One's prison, this is like Shale Ghoul, hmm. they, this is not how the book shows Shale Ghoul. <laughs> like, how do the book show Shale it's Ghoul? It's like this volcano surrounded by Trollocs and Fade and captured people that are being murdered to make the weapons of the Dark One. Like, it's this horrifying place of unparalleled nightmare. And like some dark, like evil people are called to Shale Ghoul and they have to basically go to... It's like the boar. So... It, there's a there's a place in the world which is closest to the Dark One's prison, which is Shale Ghoul. But it's actually like the Dark One's prison is like on a separate plane of reality. But the place that he can influence and reach, and the place that he would break through into the world, would be through Shale Ghoul. That's like the physical representation of the boar, kind of. I think okay. like that. Um, and so there's times where they walk down into the uh, chasm where the Dark One's presence really is, where they where he's basically able to talk to people and things. Mm. And it's this crazy mind-bending like really uh, freaky experience for all these people here it's just like it's a hole in the ground and they just go and there's like a seal that seems to be the seal of his prison and mm. and it's there's no bad guys around it at all just anyone can just walk there without any problems <laughs> it's just... it reminded me of a Skyrim dungeon it did actually it did. It was like it did not seem like it should have the weight or significance or impact or gravitas of the Dark One's prison it's just a hole in the ground. Very underwhelming. Very underwhelming. They did say that there was a bit of a pool because you see his reflection up at the start, but they don't indicate that it's the power. That was that just water? I don't like it. I didn't see any pool of power. Uh, it was a pool, and then afterwards the yeah. seal was broken. And the uh, massive boost of power that Rand gets is from the Sangriol and not the Eye of the World. And so the Sangriol is effectively trying to, or supposedly being doing what the Eye of the World was supposed to do. So Rand was supposed to get all this crazy power, but no, he can't save the people at Tarwin's Gap. Can't have him do that. The women had to do it after the, the big idiot general man showed off what a big idiot general man he was. <sighs> he was supposed to be one of the five great generals, by the way. Wow, he was he, so in the books. He's supposed to be really smart, one of the greatest generals in the world, and is this blindingly stupid idiot that sends all his men to die when he had two big options to defeat the army instead. <laughs> oh. They should just stay in their castle. You know, wasn't um, the black um, uh, white cloak supposed to be one of the great generals as well? Because they combined two, they combined the the you know dodgy white cloak with the uh, leader white cloak, and the, the the actual name that is named after is supposed to be a blade master, and he might be a great general. I can't remember. No, there's a there's a different great general for the white cloak. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm getting confused. Uh, <laughs> People are saying it wasn't a pool of power; it was a puddle of water. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> it was. Saying, yeah. <laughs> and of course, Land just passes the trolls under like they're nothing. <laughs> Uh, there's a whole scene about the sister was right. I should have asked her, hey, making Agamar look like an idiot. Um, okay, so Rand is in the pool. Uh, uh, it was a white cloak, Pedron Nile. Pedron Nile. Mm. And so he was the great general? Thanks, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Rand is in the in the dark, whatever the, the eye of the world is supposed to be in the show, and he starts remembering things from, from what, past what life. you thought this was, yeah, from his past life, okay? Yeah. Wow, this is early for Rand remembering anything significant. <laughs> like, they have really changed that up. Mm. Like, 
Oh boy, again, this is a big subversion because Rand, one, he doesn't even know he's the Dragon Reborn yet. Not He doesn't even really accept it until the end of the third book. Um, but at the end of the second book, that's when he's really starting to get worried. But in terms of memories of past lives, that takes eight, like, we're not there yet, but he is like full blown remembering like, oh, I, I remember this man or someone like that. It's like, really? Oh boy, but Rand just knows he's the dragon now. And so there's no, get, like, how could they have this really cool, interesting conflict of him accepting the role and who he is? Because being the dragon, the implications of that is get crazy. It's, they've ruined so much with this stupid reveal because by making a mystery, I don't think they didn't need to reveal who the dragon was to their characters, but they could have revealed it to the audience, maybe. But still, by by making a mystery, they've Rand has none of the character progression needs to. He has none of the, he even in the the books with the little channeling he did do, he still had more practice than what he does in the show. Mm. In the show, we don't know what he's capable of. And then Rand gives him the nuke times a hundred, even though he's a complete novice. In, oh. Okay, so yeah, and then like this evil guy is like, "What did you think what would happen when they get there?" I and I was like, "When I when he said that, I was like, exactly. What was their plan? What were they expecting?" I love how evil is just not only competent but honest. I know <laughs> the evil in this show that is makes both perfect honest sense. and competent. Because like always saying that competence is white supremacy. <laughs> we're not the ones that they say. Well, they that. say it, not us. Ah. Oh. Which I think is really racist to say, but they're the ones saying it. And then um, lying as well, I get the, the much in shin, this, this honest thing. Anyway. Um, <laughs> the evil, not, what, what have they done that's evil? I mean, I'm sure they've done evil stuff, but to the characters. So much in shin, right? When it was talking about rending people apart, it's kind of expressing the thing it loves to do. It takes glee yeah. in doing it. And then if you get caught in much inching too long, it'll just start ripping the flesh off your bones, basically, and glee in the blood and the flesh and the rending and everything like that. Yeah, but... And you hear that voice coming to you, d making these horrifyingly graphic depictions of what it's going to do to you. Yeah. <laughs> but this is like, it's hey, you suck. Yeah, yeah that, but then it <laughs> tells you really like confronting truths and stuff. Yeah. Dude, why'd you kill your wife? That was so stupid. Watch where you swing that ice. <laughs> what a letdown, right? And so, yeah, the, guy, the bad guy here is like, what did you expect? I'm like, exactly. He seems to know you guys are idiots. And it's like, there's this subversion that, ha, now I have big power, hungry old, but Moraine gets totally smacked down. Yeah, did she get gentled? So, I was like, gonna come to it chronologically, but at this point, this is where he kind of lashes out at her. And so, first of all, I was like, okay, he, this guy should be way more powerful than Moraine. So I like that he just shields her instantly. The show's being ambiguous at this point. Yeah. She says, she didn't say she was um, uh, stilled or burnt out. She said she can't touch the one power. Mm. And so there's precedent in the book that you can make a weave and then tie it off, which essentially makes the uh, weave effect, the spell you did, permanent without you having to maintain it. And so really, like super powerful channelers can shield someone and then tie it off. And there's even an event in the books where a really powerful channeler shields someone, but does one of the most crazy, intricate, unbelievably complex shieldings that the person getting shielded has ever seen. And it would be literally impossible to try and unravel this shield that was placed on it. And then she ties it off permanently as a taunt that you will always be able to sense the one power, but you'll never be able to touch it or reach it or forever be And it's like torture to this person. Um, Chat says that Brandon Sanderson has meant, said that she was stilled. Stilled. <sighs> See, I like. There's enough room for them to say that she was shielded permanently. But if she's still, then they like she's she could. It's pretty. It's earlier. Oh, I mean, does that happen in the books? Uh, actually, uh, no. She never gets stilled in the books. So this should have severe ramifications in plot and world building and so many things. Uh, if she's stilled, it, the water bond would be severed. Is that how it works? It's hard to... Uh, I can't remember. I'm sure they'll still be good friends. Good friends. <laughs> friends? So, this one, I like... I want to know why. Are they trying... Do they have interesting things that they want Moraine to do without the power? But the thing is, like, Moraine had so much interesting things she was doing with the power, and they're really... What are, what are they intending to do with this? Why did they do it? 
Uh, ask yourself about a lot of the questions, <laughs> Chad. Oh, and you come to the same answer every time. So, people are saying that no, Moraine was stilled. Okay, then. Okay. Hmm. Good plan, Moraine! <laughs> now, by the way, hang on, hang on, hang on! It was said multiple times that anyone near Rand caught in the. Uh, <laughs> The crossfire of the power of the battle between these two people would be blown away by the power and are disintegrated. Yep. Crushed between two forces of nature. Is that what happened? That's Just it. asking! Did Rain did everything and she said she was literally next to him, physical side by side. And she, she was, was holding him. Gentle. And she did not get gentled by the you know, forces of nature battling. She was gentle just by the bad guy doing it directly. But if to she her. has no power, she should have been killed by that, shouldn't she? Crush between two forces of nature. You, that's what I'm saying. She should have been wiped, like blown to smithereens, according to everything she said. Which means all the other characters could have come with them, and they would have been fine. Yeah. Or they might have been gentle by this anything bad guy as Not well. Neve could have helped. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, is there a, Just, a chat message, hun? Um, there has been a comment saying that Robert Jordan mentioned that when you're steeled, your all bonds are released. So that's what. Yeah. And well, ones. that was the, that. This is why I thought she wasn't stilled, because she said she can't lie, and if she was stilled, mm. the O's wouldn't be on her. Maybe she didn't realize it, and she just thought she still couldn't lie, because this is actually uh, something that appears in the books and the characters that they weren't aware of it, and so maybe she's unaware of it. But technically, she should be free of the O's now. Um, they're like ser serious implications. Mm. Uh, but okay, she wasn't destroyed by forces of nature. You were dead wrong, Moraine. Really, you're showing to be a smart person, aren't you? So you might, it might have been useful to have some backup <laughs> with you. Uh, okay, so... Um, uh, one the question that just did like, come up to me, Faldara, like, I'm wondering, where are their farms and cultivated lands? Like, this is a city sitting in the middle of the desert that's just, I don't know, world building, right? Um, the Trollocs just hit a wall and their plan is to just climb the wall or to hit well, it with they pickaxes? Well, no, they, they broke it down with pickaxes. Yeah, okay. And like, I have a note about Perrin snapping the way of the leaf, and I, but I was like, is this guy? But of course, that was all really subverted. They can't have Perrin do anything interesting or cool. This was confusing because before they were going to leave, and Perrin's like, no, we're to like help them, we're to defend. And then they stay, and then he goes, what can I do? <laughs> I'm stuck! <laughs> I so don't it's know like, what to do. Powerless. <laughs> like, like you, Perrin's. Winning wonderful moment here is that he digs a hole with a pick. Good job, good Perrin. job, Perrin. Legend. So much work being done by pickaxes in this episode. <laughs> yeah, I really. I, the true hero. Yeah, is the they should have got some trollocs onto it. They ought to gotten through it like that because yeah. the amount of time it takes for the trollocs to get through that wall. <laughs> I'm picturing like the, the trollocs. The trollocs don't even kill anyone in the city. They just mine it. We griefed your castle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we've already covered the utter ridiculousness that they had the Horn of Valier that they could have used because in the show they just so much if you already used it they like we used it to defeat the previous army this one's five to ten times larger but we won't use it this one no because it's for the jail what <laughs> this show is dumb. only dragging us to blow this okay oh gosh um yeah. so there was a line that Moraine says, which is also really concerning. Mm -hmm. She says, don't fight the power to Rand. Mm -hmm. Just embrace it. And like, if a, if they were using book world building, um, uh, if they told that to a guy, don't fight the power, you would they'd destroy themselves. Oh yeah! <laughs> don't. And so again, is Sidene a separate thing in this show? Because it's really sounding like Moraine could have taught him how to use the power and it's the same type of embracing, don't fight it and stuff. It's like... Because that would be gender essential if there was two sides of the one power. That oh. would be problematic, right? Careful, Shad! Well, no, I'm saying... Wouldn't We're that... approaching dangerous territory! Yeah, but I'm pointing out what I think they might have an issue I'm with. I'm pulling and... back. No, we're pulling up. We're pulling up, <laughs> pull out, pull out. <laughs> I'm just saying. Pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I've already covered a couple of things. So I have the like, okay, yeah, big question: Did Loyal die? And if he was stabbed with that dagger, he was. There's, there's no coming. He should be uh, like, I'm just dead. So either they're subverting the dagger is nearly as dangerous as it was, 
or Loy literally dead. You hear the stab sound and then he... So I'm of two minds. One, he looks so dumb and distracting in the show. That side I'm glad is gone. Two, he's <laughs> one of the greatest characters in the books. He's awesome. And you're getting rid of Loyal? So I don't think I don't think they're getting rid of him, but that just means they're going to contradict world building on a fundamental level. Well, you can level. confirm it by just looking at season two cast. Oh, yeah, well, I, I don't know. Look, the, Amazon probably isn't up talking to IMDb about what they're doing next season. I don't believe they're doing that. What? I don't think that these media companies go and tell IMDb, hey, we're doing this. Well, I, I heard that it was confirmed season two. That I know already, season two, but yeah. I don't think they're in co- talking together like that. Oh gosh. Um, so yeah, Fane does have the dagger. I'm wondering how did he get the dagger now? Like, that's been what, a common question in chat. Is yeah, where, where did, the where did Fane get? Because all we saw is Lan wrap up the dagger in a blanket, and then what? Like, what happened they with just, the dagger? They just left it there. Like in the uh, in the books, right? There's a specific arc of we see how Fane gets the dagger, and it's mm. clever. It makes sense, and we see the dagger actually being treated with the gravity and seriousness. This thing is like this. This dagger could destroy the world. Like, separate to the Dark One, it's a corrupting influence and the corruption spreads, okay? Mm. And so if this dagger is not contained, the entire world could be at stake. It's that dangerous. But Rand, blanket, not seen, and Fane just, he gets it because reasons. Like, sure. Okay, yeah. Uh, And I've already covered the whole, so I'm like, I have... Big no parent does nothing. He just stands there like a limp rag. Well, he goes to do something, but then he's like... Reminded that it's the dark way. The guy says, already you've chosen the way of the dark. Please yeah, picking up an axe to try and defend and stop these evil guys. So, like, so it's trying to stop evil look, is the dark? But that's the that's an evil guy saying it. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> you know. Should we trust it? I don't yeah. know at this point. Right, um, and then, yeah, the whole linking, naive, again, we've talked about how this is not making sense, there's no consistency, and then the question really is, did Nynaeve actually die here? It really looked like she was dead, or she was burnt out. But if she was burnt out, you can't like heal it. Or uh, well, uh, she, no way, Egwene could have healed burning out or anything like that. And usually, like gentling or stilling for, uh, for a woman is permanent. Okay. Yes, I've read the books. Don't. I'm not forgetting anything. But especially for where we're here and Egwene, like this is no. And so, there multiple levels. You can't heal death, you can't heal gentling or Egwene certainly um, and it's sorry, stilling for women uh, this is burning out, so burning out, stilling they have a kind of equivalent um, you can't heal that and then Egwene definitely wouldn't know, have the knowledge of healing of that crazy level this is like a, an insanely big healing thing Okay, but she just does it because she wants to she's, because feelings whatever, power of friendship maybe <laughs> Oh, wow. So, two last things to comment on. Um, we get Quandia makes an appearance. When Moraine was holding the thing, I said, mm-hmm. oh, is that Quandia? And then they mentioned that it's Quandia. The thing is, though, the Dark One's prison, right, is this thing that exists separate to, or in the books, separate to, like, um, their plane of reality. And so there are seals for his prison, but they're discs. They're not actually fixed to a physical location because the prison exists outside of their time and space, almost. And so these seals, yes, they are seals of the prison, yet they're discs that are not linked to anything physically and you carry them around and stuff. And finding them are a big thing in the book. It seems like this is a seal of the Dark One's prison. It's made of Quaindiar and it's in a physical location. It's like, huh? It's just, what are you trying to say here? Are there going to be seals now? I don't know. But Quaindiar makes appearance. It's the end of the episode, but there's an after credit scene, and we see the Shon Chan. The Shon Chan. This is the Shon Chan. So what are they? Well, they're uh, another civilization of people, mm. um, and I'll leave it at that. They are a set that play a very large role in the events of the book and everything. Um, they make a great antagonist because I hate the Shon Chan like uh, passionately. Uh, uh, are um, they women? No, no, no. Well, they have a, a woman leader. I mean, this is a female dominant world. But all the all of the Shan Chan that we saw were women. There are male leaders, but there's a lot of female leaders in this. Okay. And there's a female leader here. Uh, we see some Suldam. You know, you will you'll find out what they are. All these um, names. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but they did have collars on. They did. But they didn't have a chain <gasps> linking them look- to a bracelet. Mm. This is very specific. It is very, and it's importantly specific. Like, it's actually important mechanics, 
that define how something very crucial in this story works. Okay. It doesn't seem to be there. And there wasn't always a chain, but there was always a bracelet. Yes. I don't remember seeing them. Yeah, right? So what was baffling about this, there's a little girl on the seashore. There's no other point of tactical significance. There's no town, city, enemy ships or anything. And they decide, well, they'll channel the tidal wave because reasons. They just, they just want to kill the little girl. I'm thinking, like, why are they doing this? Yeah. It's a lot of power expenditure for no reason that I'm seeing. If there was a town or city there and they wanted to wipe it out, okay, maybe there's a reason that, that's obviously they're attacking. Yeah. But it's just empty seashore and then tidal wave. Yeah, well, if you're raiders and, you know, you want to take the resources and gold and riches of a town, you typically don't want to, you know... Wipe like, out the entire town. You really just wipe it off the face of the earth. It's not a good idea. <laughs> there wasn't much gold and silver left in Baal. Wait, it was Baal? Well, the Shon Shan specifically come to conquer. They don't come to wipe everything out. They want to control. Exactly. You yeah. come to conquer and take resources. Yeah, and so they just... I don't know. They wanted... like, But what? You could have just put a city there, like a digital whatever, made or whatever, something... Uh, an army, I don't know, get some extras, stand, or something, but the army, how did they know these guys are like, it's just about, they just like wanted to show Sean Chan and then doing something big with no real reason to justify it. They could no more do that than a fish could touch the moon. So, uh, that, there we go, that's episode eight. And the Damani were actually gagged. They, they had gags. things over there, I noticed that, and I was like, okay, well, Interesting. Again, do they want to show it because it's going to be so demeaning and subservient that they want to go have a gag over them? Maybe it was a mask and they have a virus in their world too. <laughs> Who knows? Um, this episode was awful. Awful. It was fundamentally broken on broken. just a technical level mm -hmm. and it, it, oh, it does such a disservice to the book material. Like making one... Like what they, the flashback with Lucer and Telemann, what they tried to say about the men channeling and the arrogance and then the fact that it was the women that <laughs> caused it. No, we're going to skip over Oh that. my <laughs> goodness. And then the whole plan with Rand, the ruining, they, they not only ruined Perrin really bad in this episode, and he's already re like getting ruined, they just had to do that little one dig in for Matt, where they see evil Matt on the streets or whatever um, doing something evil because Matt is on. evil now. Because he's wearing he's a hood. Wearing a hood. Which means he's evil. Mm. But he looked like, like, you know, and it was when Pun and Fane was talking. Oh, gosh. And the way that they've introduced the Horn of Ali now and how that's going to break a lot of important things. And they've... Oh, it's just... It's just this, this episode was awful. This show was awful. I can't believe it. Uh, I can't believe I watched eight of these. Yeah. <laughs> they, and they just got worse. They did. I think this is the worst one I've watched so far. <laughs> because for me, I've needed to point out things, which you still have in this one. Mm -hmm. But watching through this one, there were so many points where I'm like, that's a plot hole. That's a problem. <laughs> that, that's going to be an issue later. So. Uh, but do you have anything you'd like to share, my love? They, they did add a cool thing in from the battle um, when the women were all preparing and everything. They did say, light all the torches so there's no shadows for the Fade to hide in. So they mm. added a little bit of lore in there. <laughs> and then, a fade, then two Fades got in. <laughs> and most of the scenes were all dark. Yeah. You know, if the general stayed in the castle, those the Fades wouldn't have gotten in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, any other uh, thoughts or notes that you have that you wanted to share? have a look we have had some super chats when you're ready okay well um, we can jump to the super chats and then. most of them don't have spoilers in them but chat's been pretty full of spoilers anyway so <laughs> if you didn't know much about the books you probably know a lot more now all right so let's scroll to the first of the super chats thank you to everyone who's done it Ooh. nathan you might need to just, just just some some brief technical things to help but uh, do you have chat up while we're... Oh, yeah, I've got chat. Uh, let's read through some chat. Hey, chat. Okay. All right, it seems that we... Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, chat. Goodbye, right. chat. Just but to click on the right wait, when To the super chat. So uh, feel free to mention uh, who has sent the super chat. I uh, have their name there. If the username is readable. If the username is readable. And the donation amount, because uh, what, well, whatever donation, we're very flattered by. And thank you. Thank you for it as well. We like money. All right, so we've got Taylor Ramirez. Merry Christmas, fellas. I haven't been following the show, but I've been really entertained by these videos. Please keep up the excellent work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Appreciate it. And then Grumpy Smurf. Oh, and Merry Christmas to you as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Grumpy Smurf was 
five dollars. Oh, so does Taylor, and says love you guys. We love you. We love you, random Thank citizen. You. <laughs> <laughs> that is from Megamind. I haven't seen it. And it, it Megamind is really? a great movie. You should watch it. Megamind gets better and better every time I watch it. <laughs> I, I, it's a great movie. It's DreamWorks. It's they, DreamWorks. They make some good movies. Yeah. They, they do it's one of gems. the few ones where Will Ferrell actually did a good job. <laughs> And then we've got Soloso, five dollars, and I just don't think I can do it justice for Matt, but it's a but my son. <laughs> but my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least we have the memories. <laughs> the memories. The memories. The memories. <laughs> yeah. And then Matt Hep, five dollars. How does it feel to live long enough to see all your favourite franchises go down in flames? <laughs> it feels fantastic. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, I'm I have I'm conflicted on this one so much because yes, we still have the books and the books are great, but the thing is, this is introducing the Wheel of Time to a large group of people that think the Wheel of Time is trash. Yeah, I've, more than once we had multiple comments of people saying, "I thought the books were trash from what this show was saying," and it's only your reviews when you reference the book material how much the books are better that actually reveal the books are good mm. and that they've gone and bought the books as a result of our reviews and stuff. The this, this show is doing harm to not only Wheel of Time success, I think, mm. but also its reputation, what it meant, all right? Uh, it's, it's awful. Well, it's a, it's a symptom of the woke stuff, man, mm -hmm. and, and the rebooting. It's like corporate woke mm. come together with the rebooting, man. Mm. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become woke. <sighs> so, in terms of like all my franchises dying and stuff, Gosh, yeah, I, I'm kind of at the point where I just don't want to see new adaptations because the track record has been so bad and they've ruined so much. I was like, just don't don't touch it. Leave it. It's good. We don't want the reputation to be ruined. Leave it alone, you hacks. You just wait Remaster it, put it on Blu-ray. Give me HD versions, yeah. but don't touch the source material. Yeah. Thank you, you just wait until you watch the new Matrix movie. <laughs> it's so <laughs> the worst movie I've ever seen. I think something to look forward to, guys. Uh, yeah, another. <sighs> Any more? Yes, there's, <laughs> I think there's a lot more. All right, from the Swedish Chef, two dollars. Oz, will you read me crime statistics? No, absolutely not. Is, is this the is this you the naughty hey, boy? Is this no, the... wait a minute. You've tried to trip us up. You naughty. Don't do that. Don't. Is this the true Swedish chef, the Muppet one? I don't know what that is. Uh, if you is are, you I love you. Banana, ba, 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 da, like, is that that one? I, I remember laughing no. out loud that there was a skit with the Muppet Swedish chef where he's trying to make pasta and it's always trying to move off the plate and he's trying to push it back on the plate and then it jumps on his throat and it's like, <laughs> it's like yeah. it attacks it. Oh, it's so funny. I love it. <laughs> they tried to pull us up just then. I'm not kidding. <laughs> he did. He's a naughty fella. All right, and then we have Khalid Ali. Um, rage with plenty of exclamation marks. <laughs> Cut the limb and in brackets, Rafe. Save the body. <laughs> there is implication to that. We do not endorse any harm against an individual. This is true. But he harmed our, harmed our stuff, <laughs> Shane. He is, he is harming us. Yes. Words of violence, okay. Mm. Oh, well, that's if that's the case. Yep. <laughs> and then we have Old King Cole. Very old soul, I guess. Uh, Five dollars. Merry Christmas, y'all. Hail knights. Hail Lady Shad slash Sonya. The Ozkill cometh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hail to you, sir. Uh, backslash five pounds. Shad's Ooh, wife hey. is actually Ben hiding behind the camera and doing a voice. Change my mind. I actually, <laughs> I hate Ben. Okay, he's dead. So let's just move on from Ben. <laughs> Daniel, five dollars. I was all prepared to champion Oz for so often being right about wokeism, but now that I find out he doesn't know about Red Sonia, forget it. Yep, you Ooh. you harmed your what is Red authority Sonya from? What is and she from? Oh, you just keep going, Oz. What is she you're, from? This is a grave, and you're just digging and digging. Tell me. <laughs> Lost all credibility. Can you just tell Man, me? I'll go consume all of the Team media. Oz has just lost its members by half. I think I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's from uh, Mortal Kombat. Am I right? <laughs> just tell me and I'll go consume oh. all of it. No, I'm letting you dig your Shaq, own grave. Tell me, tell me right now. Okay? Oh, tell man, me where is Red is... Sonya from? And don't you dare mislead me. This is glorious. Where's Red Sonya from? So we've been going for a bit. 
I might need a pause and quickly do a toilet break and come back and Red we'll continue Sonya on the stupid movie. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> you go take your poop. Red I'll Sonya talk to has a sorted history. You guys keep talking, having yes. fun. Uh, leave the super chats because I want to be there for them. All right. But maybe have some uh, general uh, chat discussion. Hello, people. Now I'm in the hot seat. Oh no! <laughs> Someone oh, just mocked you for not being able to use Google. By the way, Oz. <laughs> I'm not gonna go and Google it, okay? That's Why not? lazy. I'll, I'll sit over here so we're equal. Oh. So me and Nathan can feel equal. That'll help you feel better, won't it? You mean you feel better? No, I feel fine. You're the one that's, you know, taken offence. Not offence. Hurt. You're hurt a bit. A little bit hurt. Take a moment to categorise your thoughts and then come back to me with <laughs> insults. <laughs> Let's read some stuff out. Uh, not super chats though. We'll wait for Shad to get back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, you're getting some some love in the chat. Hey, I'm getting some. They're, they're saying yeah, hello. Some team Oz there. Team Oz's. Yeah. Best team. Name a better team than Team Oz. You can't. Team Nathan, obviously. No, there is. So, oh, what's the issue with Team Nathan, Oz? Now you might have as many people in Team Nathan as there are in Team Oz, but they're all as quiet as you are. So yeah. they don't know they're there. We're the quiet majority. <laughs> the qu the quiet majority. We get things done. You get things done. Yeah. Hmm. Oz, tell me, if I wasn't here, could we be live streaming right now? If you weren't here... Okay, look, okay, here's how it works, right? How many times have you said, Nathan, I'm gonna live stream tonight, then you don't, because you're like, I didn't know what to do. Like, four times? <laughs> yeah, four times. Here's the thing, though, and I know I say that often, Here's the thing. It's true. Here's the thing. The mistakes you make are etched into our memory forever. Yeah. Okay? The mistakes I make are... Forgotten. Easily fixed. Yeah. Easily fixed. I have a team now, guys. There's oh. a team Shad's wife, a team Nathan, and a team Oz. I haven't seen any team Shad, strangely oh. enough. No team Shad. Well, to be oh. fair, he has one million. He has, he has a separate channel. Yeah. His channel's his team. I yeah, guess. yeah. I think he's got us beat there. Yeah. What else is there in the chat? Let's have a look. Lol, Oz exposed. <laughs> Oz, what's your favourite soda? I don't always drink Bundaberg Tropical Mango, but when I film literally anything I do. So, yeah. Yeah. This is this stuff right here. I used to never like mango when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, but now I love it. Mango's I love great. mango. Yeah. Just Bundaberg drinks in general are just chef kiss. I just delicious. like the mango. I like all of it. Like ginger beer, I drank a lot growing up. Guava is my favourite right now. Mm. Yeah, they're all... Even the pineapple and coconut. That's great, but they're all insignificant against the raging sun that is mango. <laughs> tropical mango. Like a raging sun. Did you wash your hands, Shad? Of course I did. Okay, just making sure. So we've now progressed to Shad. We have no. uh, Team Oz, Team Nathan, Team um, Shadlings, and Team Lady Shad. Well, we know Team Lady Shad's just going to... Win. Or wife Shad or Shad wife or Team Wife. There's, there's a few different names I've got. Team Wife. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, on YouTube, I just go by Lady Shadiversity, but you know, whatever. Well, now that we've got more than one brand, we need a Lady Shadiversity doesn't exactly work. Yeah, I kind of need to upgrade from Lady Shadiversity and yeah. figure out something else. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm almost back, guys. He's just doing his pants up now. Yeah. Oh, I can't can't come back on pantsless. Oz, that would just be inappropriate. Oz uh. makes laws. Nathan makes bacon. What is? I don't know what that means, but I love it. Uh, it. Here's the funny thing, though. I also cook the bacon. You make the bacon. I cook the bacon. He does actually cook the bacon. How good? Can you please tell people how good my BLTs are? It's, it's pretty. He makes great BLTs. Great BLTs. Yeah. All right. Back to super chats. All right. So we now have the fighting expert with five dollars. How bad is this episode compared to episode, episode 3 of Arcane? I'm asking to get a genuine oh. reaction because I think I saw a pregnant woman on the thumbnail. I think he's referring to the previous episode. Might be, yeah. Um, so, w this Wheel of Time show doesn't even compare to how good Arcane is. Arcane is... No, Wheel of Time is like a flame compared to the raging sun. <laughs> that is Arcane. I'd always give Arcane like a 9 or 10. Well, yeah. episode 3 specifically, ten. probably a 10. Or it's yeah. that the rest good. of the show... What, okay, what's wrong with the show? There's not a single thing wrong with the show. Um, well, I'm going through... Uh, my, I'm trying to complete my in-depth watching of Arcane mm. and uh, I've watched episode 4 and I've got notes and I'll need to watch episode uh, 5 and 6 Okay. Uh, so maybe we'll find something as we go through there's not much, like even now episode 1 to 3 I only like true criticisms I don't know how to pull out one or two problems I just don't like Mel's mum, she's annoying 
Who's Mel? That's she's not like from a... Noxus. She's the oh yeah, yeah. that one yeah. yeah. She's, but, uh, she but, no, but there's a difference between disliking a character yeah. uh, and then being poorly written. I think she was perfectly fine. Like my, I, do, I dislike Jace, but I think he was very consistently written for who he is. I love Jace. Yeah. Um, oh, Are you too forward, Nathan? You he feel? is. Move back a bit. Get in, get in line. Get in. Am, I, the, am um, I out of focus, chat? We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Fine on my but yeah, are you the fighting expert? That yet to be is yet to be seen, sir. So we'll, we'll, yeah, fight we'll, us for that. Right. <laughs> but thank you for the super chat. Mm. All right, and we have uh, Orc War Chief reviews. Ooh, with, uh, that's a name. Orc War Chief. Wait, Orc O R K. O R C. Have you boys seen the D&D changes yet? I have uh, heard of them. I've heard that they're making less monsters evil and I think they're removing beholders. Only, Was that true? I haven't, I've, I've only seen headlines. I haven't seen the in-depth articles They yet. did make one change. They removed... No, none of the races are inherently evil now. Now it's only white human males are <laughs> inherently evil. Oz is joking. I don't know the specifics. Am I? Am I joking? Is this a joke? <laughs> what if we just finished watching, Chad? Um... Yeah, I don't know the specifics, but D and D is really like some of the changes with sorry choices Wizards of the Coast have been doing lately. Are just like, what is going on, guys? Mm. Okay, yeah, sorry, that's all I can say on that one. There was a rest of there was a rest of it saying something like it was Earth Seas levels of bad, but that was the general gist. When they say Earth Seas, I'm wondering, are you talking about the uh, Studio Ghibli uh, adaptation of Earth Sea or the original source material? Because I thought the original Earth Sea books were decent. I haven't read them, but I've just heard a good report. So, don't know. Uh, Gunner, uh, 20, my channel is under attack. Oh, oh I'm sorry, uh, would you like reinforcements? Like, I don't, uh, what are you asking for? Fight, keep fighting the good fight? Like, well, actually, I don't, I like don't know beacons. what your channel is, if you ch <laughs> so I can't endorse or uh, say anything. Dude, light like the beacons, yeah. and then Rohan might come to aid you. But... All I remember is like PewDiePie shouting out these channels, and then one of them had problematic content. I don't know how bad it was. I don't know. That I only saw headlines again. Anything but you got, dra you got raked through the coals for daring to shout out a channel yeah. that people thought was... Yeah, but then again, anything but complete submission to the ideology is oh, well, grounds right. for getting... You know, uh, yeah, I don't know the context of that story, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just I'm just a bit wary with, about. I don't know. Can we support you? I need to see your content before. Yeah, I can, yeah. But thank you for the super chat. We do, and I hope everything you know works just, out. It's just okay. Like we don't know who they mm -hmm. are, but just the fact they're being attacked means they're doing something right. We don't know. We don't know. The fact they're still on YouTube and they're being attacked. <laughs> Alrighty, next next super chat. All right, so this is the I guess the super super chat. Who, what, when, where for a hundred dollars? Oh, thank, thank you. you. Very much. <laughs> Damn. I felt insane before finding your reviews. I couldn't understand why supposed book lovers were enjoying this show. Thanks for the videos and Merry Christmas from the NT. So that's perhaps all the, the territory. Territory. Thank you in Australia. Well, and thank, in thank you very much. Uh, and look, I feel really honoured that we. Oh, Look, it's weird that we're the only, one of the few. There are some great people calling out and says books with Bianca and Desparo are making great um, reviews, uh, with it, which are actually willing to criticise and, and compare what what we have here compared to the book material. And there's other people online as well. Uh, we seem to be one of the larger channels and one of the only larger channels. And I don't consider us too big, but in terms of views, um, uh, and it's bizarre that we seem to be the only ones actually calling out. Like some of these changes, even look. I get annoyed with the agenda that I feel is behind it, but if you would just throw the agenda away and just cons consider how good is this show, it's awful. I was talking to, I won't mention who, but some people last night, and uh, one had never read the books, but his wife had and a friend had read the books, but he, he, even him not wear, reading the books, they're all hating the show. They're like, this show is garbage. Yeah. Right? Um, we forgot to mention, but I guess I can mention now, we even have some images in terms of just looking at um, uh, Google Trends because there's this debate about how popular the show is and everything. And I think the show is very popular with people of a certain mindset. They're loving it. And they're going to be hugely loyal to this show. Mm. They're going to be like the fans of Batwoman, right? It doesn't matter how bad it is, but because this show is supporting their ideology and their message, they're going to support the show through... It doesn't matter how bad it gets. And so this show, Wheel of Time Adaptation, there are, there are people who are actively crapping on the books because uh, this show is such an ally and they're trying to say it's better than the books and stuff like that. And they will be 
avid fans no matter what happens in the show to the end of time and that might be enough for Amazon to justify keeping on this burning ship forever like yeah but at the end of the day they can't they can't keep it up forever they can't replicate you know they can't well where, this is the thing like how popular is the show they're trying to say it's the number one streaming show in the world it's like on you, Amazon you, know, video, you might is... want to compare that to actually other shows of similar thing and how their views are to get a better baseline and when we look at Google Trends I'm not sure if you're able to bring up that image yet or not there's three yeah. which one would you like so the Witcher one okay so alright let's see how well the um the Wheel of Time is doing compared to say The Witcher which was just released looking at Google Trends and have a look at how much interest The Witcher had when it was released compared to Wheel of Time yep there's a bit of a difference yep. and if you're trying to see what is actually being a very uh, interesting and engaging fantasy property that's actually might be reaching a larger audience and I don't think The Witcher is The Witcher's not as huge as Lord of the Rings were was or things like that but it's and Witcher season 1 wasn't even good like I'll be, I'm hearing good things from season two, by the way, but I will, we'll have our review out of it. And look, like even go further back, right? When streaming wasn't as big, back when Game of Thrones was on TV and stuff mm -hmm. like that, when a Game of Thrones episode came out once a week, the entire world stopped, watched it, and then talked about it till the next episode. Mm -hmm. You know? But now there's nothing like that because the show sucks. So you could take that image down for now. Um, but so the difference is pretty huge. Yep. And then, okay, so how popular really is this show? I have not been seeing it get mainstream traction or appeal. A lot of other review, main, like larger review channels, aren't looking at it. Unless they are dedicated Wheel of Time, they're fans already, and they wanted to look at the show because they're fans, or they're dedicated Wheel of Time YouTube channels already. I'm seeing barely anyone even give this show any attention. I don't think I've said this on, on stream or video, but like my in-laws, they watch mm -hmm. all the main like big things that come out on like everything, Netflix, Stan, whatever. Mm -hmm. They've never once to me, and since this show's been released, even mentioned Wheel of Time. And they watch everything. So the fact that hey they haven't even don't even know about it shows how in contrast, I don't think Wheel of Time is actually doing that well. Yeah, uh, well, bring up the Cowboy Bebop one, because have a look at the Wheel of Time trend versus the Cowboy Bebop um, uh, Google trends. There's not too much of a distance there <laughs> between these two. Cowboy Bebop was an unmitigated disaster. And so was, was this. Yeah, and Cowboy Bebop, were the, the adaptation, the original anime was great, but the adaptation was a disaster, and the adaptation was cancelled after the first season. Uh, they're already renewed the second season of Wheel of Time, and I think they Is might the just same? because just because it's got the right message. They, I think they might be pushing through and just make the whole show. Netflix have the same thing though. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. I, I think this show is an abomination. I'll be happy for to see it cancelled to just yes. redeem some of the um, die the Wheel of Time's good name. Uh, and look, like people, I, I, so thanks for showing that, hun. We can go back to the normal stream. Um, I hate. The, the comment that this is all you're going to get. Be, it's like basically you're starving and then someone tans you a turd and says be grateful for the turd because it's the only thing you're going to get to eat for the next... Uh, no! I still have full rights to complain about the crap you're serving. Uh, like, and by the way, I would much prefer just this show not to exist for how bad it is uh, and then to not just because of what it's doing to the good name of the Wheel of Time and uh, uh, it's just... Like I said, disrespect the source material in such a horrible way. And so, yeah, I don't give me that excuse that this is all you're going to get. And then they're like saying, and you were like, if you get this show cancelled, you won't see another one for 40 years. Good. Hmm. <laughs> like, a good one like, might come out in 40 years. Like, by the, I, at the way adaptations are going, I don't even want to see an adaptation because they're most likely going to be like this. I'd prefer my favorite properties to be left alone at, the, at this moment. Though, I mean, I did like Invincible. I would love a good Wheel of Time adaptation. A good one. True to the source material, and hey, if I had to wait another 40 years for it, so be it. Yeah, but Invincible had tons of woke stuff in it. We've already covered this. Shut up. Uh, uh, well, that um, super chat uh, got us on a larger <laughs> conversation. Thank you for it, though. We really do appreciate your generosity. Yeah. Oh, man. We're at the end of a not only the end of the year, Christmas is around the corner. Well, literally tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> you know, end of the year, coming up, twenty twenty two. We finished Wheel of Time, you know. So many just disastrous calamities have come to a <laughs> to an to end. Close, end. Yeah. Um all right, next super chat. Alright, next one is Ryu Planeswalker. 
$5, Amazon low gain did nothing wrong. <laughs> I kind of agree. Uh, it was raising an army, which wouldn't be content considered exactly right. We he don't know thought he was doing right. We don't know if he attacked anyone unjustly. He was raising an army, but it seemed like people were attacking him. Yeah, and he was merciful. And he was, people. and he was, mer he was showed, he was actually showed a huge amount of mercy when he was like had the king there, and yeah. and he was like thought he was doing the right thing, and he was defending himself when getting imprisoned against his will and stuff. It's like, you know, I kind of agree. <laughs> but that just goes to show, man, they are making out things that are being honest. Things that are, you know, showing decent logic. <laughs> they're evil. Oh. Hey, people who show mercy versus the Aes Sedai who are like, we're going to make an example of you. Your life will be torture. Yeah, and, and an example to any men who can channel. Even if it's against their will, I don't mean it. We're going to show you what they will get because... <laughs> Maybe the real heroes were the villains we met along the way. <laughs> <laughs> well. All right. Squared away, $2. Latra said Sidin to... Louis Theron and male channelers. So I saw this in chat a little bit. Yeah. Um, the word side in was said in the other language, but not in the closed captions. Oh, I need a. Uh, I, I hope that. So, what's 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 it? They are showing that like they're being separate things. Look, why do? Why would they only have that again? I still like why they why make it so cryptic. Why are they depicting side so far? Male channeling seems exactly the same as female channeling. But look, so it was in another language. Is that what it was? What was it in the background? In the intro, when they were speaking another language, yeah, the the word Sidin came up. Oh, okay. Well, but it wasn't translated down on the bottom. Yeah. Why, indeed, Shad? So she said Sidin, but the translation there wasn't the captions. It was actually what was it translated to? The one power. Um, your men, or something, I think. Because th that's also intentional. <laughs> like, it's like I don't know. I don't know. Why, indeed? Yes, why? It makes me wonder. Thank you for the super chat, though. Scarfy the Strange, $5. The only explanation I have for the show is that it's one of the alternate lives Rand experienced when activating that pillar later on in the books. And that is a similar thing that yeah. um, Brandon Sanderson has said, though he's, he's more of turning of the wheel. A different turning way. of the wheel, um, but... Those aren't the Wheel of Times we wanted. We wanted a adaptation of the same wheel, turning of the wheel as in the. That's what could be my whole point. And those worlds weren't any like they weren't good, better. Like, <laughs> I think we shouldn't call this show Wheel of Time. Mm. We just call it What. What? <laughs> Instead of yeah, well that's a W O T. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, what? what? Just what? it is a What. Just make this one feeling <laughs> when I watch it. You know what? Jason Solo, ten dollars. I may be wrong, but wasn't the Angriol that Rand used specifically one that only enhances the female side of the one power? That's the question. Like, she said that it had male the uh, yeah so much power of a hundred male channels or something like a hundred male channels put their power into this thing, and so that seemed to imply that it's a male. Yeah, so if it was a woman, one would only be seventy-one channels. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> from Brinks, uh, $4.99. Much love from Wisconsin. Thanks for speaking out against terrible work writing. Wish I could give more, but I'm an original musician in a pandemic. Well, seriously, uh, the fact that you're giving anything at all is very generous and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, Wisconsin. And good luck with your music as well. And speaking of music, we have Custom Song Maker, $20. What helps my budget? I usually get only get degraded and insulted this much in paid sessions. <laughs> <laughs> my fave streamer says I'm a pay pig, also a man. Touching it makes it filthy. I'm glad my wife's boyfriend lets me watch this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jack Murphy, welcome. <laughs> welcome, Jack Murphy. Hi, hi, hi. Avoid controversies, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was a funny super chat. <laughs> <laughs> so. There was some irony that we picked up on. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Me too, Nathan. Yeah. <laughs> you did I was just straight up my head. <laughs> Ding of that yeah. one. Okay, OBG70, $20. The Sat Angriol that she gave Rand is the same one she wrapped up in the cloth in the first 30 seconds of the first episode. 
example, there is no difference between them because that reinforces two genders, which is problematic. Well, see, yeah, that's the question, because she explained male giving the thing, but mm. even that, even though I said that it implies it's a male sign grill, it doesn't necessarily mean that a female couldn't use it, and uh, I did not... Did, did that appear in episode one? Because, look, Moraine is supposed to have a sign grill, but a weak one. Not like a friggin' nuclear, hundred times plus crazy thing. Because uh, that would have been really helpful fighting trollops. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a ten dollar one. Thank uh, you. But guys, they talked about Sidine and Sidar in the bonus features, so they don't need to mention it. Yes, in the show. No. okay. That is a valid excuse. Uh, for some stop oh, no, telling no, us wait, wait, about wait, wait. The, the, the comment. Even the comment was saying that like, what's the end of the comment? It's like, like, like that is a valid excuse for some reason. So the comment is pointing okay, out. Okay, okay. They're just on your side. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> okay, I'm. Well, it's <laughs> not, it's like, calm down, man. Calm down. Listen to the whole thing. I'm just sick of people saying, I like, know. you know, go to Yuri Bezmenov. You know? Exactly. Like, we've seen it already. Yeah. Anyway, no, I'm talking about no, I'm talking about the uh, the fact they keep saying oh in these other videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sick of hearing that. Sick of hearing it. Yeah, but why bring up Yuri Bezmenov? He's trying to a... slide in something. What do you mean? Oh, by the way, oh, look, Yuri Bezmenov was pretty basic. So. What's wrong with the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to impersonate you there. <laughs> <laughs> $20 from Daniel. Writers who are handed positions instead of earning them through accomplishment do not know how to write characters who earn power through training, just as a writer cannot create a character more intelligent than themselves. Well, that's the thing, you know. Uh, competence is white supremacy. Well, no, there, there's a, does, there is something to be said about drawing from personal experience. Um, and if you don't have this personal experience that you want to write about, well, you learn about the people going through similar things to try and inform your own writing and things. Um, and uh, I see the I I see what they say. Uh, commenter is saying, and uh, it's yeah, you're right. Like, how do they get the jobs? And I've I've even heard people get jobs because of the amount of followers they have on Twitter at times. And I'm jealous because I wish I could get a job like that. No, you can't because you are a white male. Okay? But am I Oz? Yes. Am I? <laughs> yes, you literally are. But what if I say I'm not? All right, all right moving on. Kay. Moving on. <laughs> I'm, I'm you were worried about me. <laughs> yeah, I know, Nathan. Where are you going with that? <laughs> Sometimes I challenge. I want to tread the waters a little bit. <laughs> See if it's. See how safe that is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. From Scarfy to Strange, two dollars. Showrunners, I win again. Shad Theron. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. You know, you know, it's from the book where um, there's a, a, an event that happens in the book where. I, it's the dark one, and he basically like says, "I would again lose therein," and so I don't. I, too much spoilers for me, guys. I that's a that's a, that's a that's a pretty significant one in the book. So, I don't, but people have been quoting that, uh, and uh, like, yeah, it's a very good kind of meme quote in reference to what's happening, because mm. this does feel like a reality that the dark one would approve. <laughs> I feel like this show was written by the dark one. <laughs> Just think about it. All the evil forces have been honest and consistent, and all the heroes have been idiots. <laughs> I wouldn't say not everyone, but there's certainly signs. Uh, all right, thank you for the super chat, though. We do appreciate it. All right, Mine Rat 27, five pound. Shad, thank you for being a beacon of light during this debacle. The law is lying whipped and beaten on the floor, and not even a Gwen can save it. <laughs> <laughs> that saves something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, we, we really do actually appreciate and feel honoured that we can be the voice of so many fans that are just appalled at this atrocity. I'm just shocked that... There's no one else saying that this is bad. Well, there, like, like no one large, you mean? Like, large, really. like everyone's saying this is a good show. Because I watch it, I'm like, this is, it's it's pretty not yeah. good. Well, I, I am the largest person saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but like I said, uh, books with Bianca and Desparo are making some good content. So check them out. All right, evil zombie toe, four ninety nine. I'm sorry I doubted you. I watched episode one after your review, and I'm still angry. <laughs> it isn't watched. Nothing matches the lore, the characters, nor the world. Hey, we're still angry too. Yeah. <laughs> Eight episodes in. Yep. <laughs> Lock Nath, four ninety nine. It's the only good thing to come out of this show. Is the only good thing to come out of this show the Rosamund Pike book narration on Audible? Shad, tell us about today's sponsor, Audible. <laughs> 
when they come up in a sponsorship video. But uh, if you are interested in a good book on Audible, check out my novel, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror. And guess what? It's narrated by the same people who narrated the classic uh, Wheel of Time audiobook, Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. Absolute legends. So it's fun listening to them narrate a book. And so you can check out mine if you're interested. Mm. That was smooth. Thank you. <laughs> on command, it's like my book entrepreneur right there. <laughs> Lock Map, $1.99. Would you say the writers have a heroin addiction? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm probably LSD with this level of writing. Uh, <laughs> not heroes. No hero. comments. Oh, the, the, the writer? Oh. Heroin, like hero, but a female oh. hero. <laughs> heroin addiction. Heroin. I see what you oh. did there. It's actually DMT, though. Yeah. Thing is, I have nothing against heroines. You have not, nothing against heroines? No, not, not the drug, but the uh, female hero mm. character archetype, if they're done well. What about powerful black heroines? If they're done well. If they're yeah. done well. If they're done well. If they're well done. Because I, I can make so many drug references look, here. Look, just pull the plug. You Okay, pull, because... No, we're abandoned. I'll pull the right. plug as in don't let... No, Oz, Oz, I we're, we're moving on! Shut up! I know, I, know, I won't moving do it. Oh, I thought you'd watch... Like whenever you feed it, he's going no, back. I thought you were saying just stop, do it. Stop, stop! I'm not going to do no. it, but I thought you were saying just do it. Just get yeah. it out of the way. Oh. Dude, it would have been bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, right. moving on now. Uh, Baron, $5. The best part about Perrin, he ran away to chase Fane, but then circled back to find everyone dead by Fane. <laughs> and then went up to Fane with an axe, but then dropped the axe and let Fane go. <sighs> Who writes this crap? Who? Like, it's like they had to go out of their way to make Perrin look like such a sissy in this. Yeah! Uh, and it's intentional. If you have to go out of your way to do it, they were doing it on purpose, mm. okay? The natural course, the blueprint they had in the books, Perrin was his legend, he was strong, he would defend people. Like, I even think Perrin, especially in Wolf Rage mode, especially seeing Loyal die, wouldn't care about fades. He would have thrown himself at them to try and stop these scumbags. But this Perrin is like, mm, come on. Not the same Perrin, it's just not. Nah. I'm just imagining, right? <laughs> Pat and Fade is like stabbed naive, and then he's just like, apologize to her! <laughs> <laughs> Shad is the dragon. He shall save the world of what? And break it, the watch show. So when you asked all those years, what about dragons? It was you! Oh, no, it's... No, I deny everything. Um, uh, we have to wait until the prophecy is fulfilled for me to even admit anything, and I'll leave it at that. Remake the world, Shad. <laughs> Virgin of wokeness. <laughs> then, Kayla Ramirez, $2.00. Pure nerd rage, and I believe that happened when you were at your loudest. <sighs> <laughs> it's still simmering. It's still there. It's bubbling. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh. A hot simmer. This. Uh, how? How did they do it? Oh, I know how. It's just. Anyway. Next. Next. <laughs> next. Moving on. <laughs> Don't ask how, Shad. Ask who. <laughs> and blame them. And, and this one's just a line from the book, so, guys. I won't get it that's so much, but it's from Gunnar. You are here too weakly, young bull. <laughs> I don't get it. It's a line that, uh, is it Hopper? I think Hopper says that to Perrin. Young bull? Mm. That's the name of the wolves give That's, give that's Perrin. Perrin's wolf that's name. The wolves name him. I don't think Perrin's a bull in this I show. know, no. it doesn't fit he's the, op <laughs> he's the opposite of the bull in this show, <laughs> if you know what I mean. He's a limp I, cow. I think that was the problem. He was there far too weakly. Yep. Can I tell you something so you understand the joke I made? I won't tell them. <laughs> now, Chad, you didn't hear that, did you? All right, next week. Well, I did it from here, so I don't know what Chad heard. Okay. okay. All right. This one's gone straight over my head, so okay. we'll just go and see how we go. Make sure, okay, I hope it's not a hidden meme and better. No edgy memes. Oh, yeah. I hope they're behaving themselves. I know, well, when I say edgy, <laughs> no edgy memes that go too far, because I know we can be edgy too, but anyway. Bill McAwesome, Perrin can't fight, he's too busy carrying a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We get it, we oh, get it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> he pulls his dead wife out of it. I've only ever loved one woman. I hope, my I, wife. I, I've already voiced my feelings on the fridge thing, because I, th I, I think it, it's a, 
not a bad or a good trope. It's how, all about execution. Mm. And so I think people... I actually feel that, one, it's a sexist thing because they only ever seem to have an issue with it when it's women, when there are lots of male characters that seemingly get fridged and no one has an issue with it. And so if fridging is specifically a gendered trope, it becomes a sexist trope because people think it's only a bad thing when it happens to women. It's like, come on, be consistent. And then the fact that there is good examples of fridge. Anyway. But I like teasing people who think it's a bad thing to point it out saying, hey, if you think it's bad... Uncle Ben. Here's a, well, here's a fridge that parent is carrying. <laughs> right, so next one is Barrett, five dollars. Thank you. Weep for the loss of the green man and not getting to see Lawyer sing to his burial tree to protect his yeah. burial from the blight. So they basically cut the Eye of the World and just made him go to the Dark One's prison. In the book, when they go to the Eye of the World, they meet a, they call him the Green Man. He's like an ent, like he's a tree man. He's one of these ancient, you know, tree men people, one of the last ones alive. Um, and <laughs> he actually goes berserk on a bad guy and rips him to pieces. And so we admit we don't get that. And, um, and also, Royal is with him in the books, and so he does a very special kind of sacred song at the Green Man's, um, uh, you know, death. Um, and that song, like, it, it's not book plot, like, changes the plot of the book, but it's significant in the sense of certain elements. Yeah, and, um, it's the little touches that make yeah, the book. Yeah, you know. and, uh, and that song that Royal sings, well, let's just say there are people looking for a song. And you leave it at that. Uh... Oh! Luckily for us, we don't care about the tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the builders or or whatever you wish to call them in this, but Loyal, his people, when they sing, they can sing to wood and make it stronger and better, and instead of cutting wood, they will sing to it and it will take the shape that they want. That's cool. Yeah. They're called the builders. Like, technically, Ogier built most of Tarvolan, and, and Tarvolan in the books is supposed to have these incredibly intricate buildings, some like made to look like a giant fish and then some like, like it has all these one that can like... touch them <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Tarvolan actually looks very different to the description it looks at how intricate and unique all the buildings are supposed to be because the you know um, the Ogi is built it yeah it's just more changes right now we have Storyteller Storyteller Nylon five dollars currently going through the books can confirm Dark or light can blow the horn. It's specifically stated in the end of book one, in book two and three thus far. However, there has been a chat throughout that that's what it was said at the beginning books, but by the end it was corrected by um, Brigitte, I think. Brigitte? Brigitte. Yeah. And I believe that she contradicted that later. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it, it's interesting, it goes both ways, that people believed at this early on in the story that even, like the bad people could blow the horn and gain control of it. Uh, so thank you for the confirmation as well. We appreciate it. And the super chat. Uh, Bob Lakewood just gave you $5. Thank comment. you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, Andrew Felsher. Um, regarding White Cloak Mod, all the best thing for what since BS would shed rage on land slash Agomar poem line being a password after butchering Agomar's character. Can we get that in English? Please? <laughs> I, I, I need a translator for that one. As good as I got. So, <laughs> I, think, I, think, chat, but... they, I think they're saying we're uh, a good addition to the White Cloak, our White Cloak um, uh, subreddit. And so, and hey, we appreciate your support, guys, and we support you too. Uh, and then. Uh, it was a book reference that I that went above my head. Yeah, something about the thing that Pat on face says is the password. And then he gets into the room. I can't remember. Oh, what did he, what did he say? Did remember he knocked on oh, the door. Oh yeah, he, he says a password off. there in the show. Um, I, I forget what he said. Did you want to just reread it just to be kept, just in case? R slash white cloak mod. Okay, so this is some. Oh, this is a white cloak mod who's making the. Is this from him or? No, it's from Andrew Felsher. But he's probably saying he's, a, uh, he's an R slash White Cloak mod. I guess. He's a moderator. And, and that's I from think. I think. Reddit, is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. Reddit. Yep. Um, you're the best thing for what since BS? Since, for Wheel of Time, since... Brandon Sanderson? Brandon Sanderson, wow! Oh, jeez. Thank you. And could Shad rage on land slash Algomar poem line being a password oh. after butchering Algomar's character? 
Okay, so they used a line from the book out of context then. Uh, I need to look up the context because that one, it's too far long for me to remember. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm not the best speaker since <laughs> Spanish episode. <laughs> I've let you down. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember that either. But there are some great things that um, people are pointing out on r slash white cloaks of references to the book material that are being subverted and ruined and butchered and stuff. And so if you want to see even details that, of course, we can't catch everything, check them out. Um, the wall, five dollars. It would be interesting if somebody had a training dummy in the background so Shad could take his frustrations out. <laughs> oh, I can just bring in. <laughs> <laughs> I have a training dummy. Yeah. Or just been borrowing your dummy. <laughs> I'm right here. You don't want to give me any extra work. Oh, uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> we had this idea that whenever you got angry at me during a live stream, we could hold up like a sheet and you could like slap me. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't actually do it. You just clap your hands and mm -hmm. whatever. Alright, now from Zach Wright, $10. What did you fellas think of the last duel? I saw some similarities to what, but the acting, action, and set pieces were much better. It looked so bad, I haven't even watched it. I watched it. Just half helmet. <laughs> yeah, that was awful. The one good thing I did appreciate though, yeah. they gave both sides of the account. Okay. That was mm. the. Uh, it mm. slowed the movie down quite a lot, <laughs> but it, at least they went for that. Okay, that. well that's that's all we can say on it unfortunately, but thank you for the super chat though. Andrew Felsher, has Shad realised that Moraine takes land Rand to the eye of to the eye to do the exact thing she called the arrogance in episode one opening line. It's even worse though! Like she's not only doing that, she, she's not even got the preparation or the like like amount of people behind her support. Her chance of success is vastly less than them, and she's doing something that she caught, yeah, criticised men of being arrogant to even bother considering the hypocrisy. Again, consistency. They're not even aware of, like, what they establish in their own show and then they just contradict it flat out. You're right, I agree. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this might be another one over my head, but so you'll have to tell me. Okay. Not cooperating. Scarfy the Strange, critical forsaken theory says channel binary is a social construct. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> that was very well hidden, my friend. Excellent work. Um, B, five dollars. If Rand identified as a woman, he could use her <laughs> Well, a little less I, hidden there. Hang on, hang on, a little less hidden <laughs> than that one. We don't know if side R and side E are a thing. The only reference is perhaps an... Well, it sounded like the show is say if someone said side E... But then it was translated to something else. The word mean doesn't even mean what it's supposed to mean according to the show at the moment. So we don't have act yet proper confirmation that there are two halves to the one power. <sighs> and like, how could they not have that in the first? I, I think they probably have it canonically that they're two halves, but they feel referencing the two halves is too problematic and they yeah. don't want to trigger anyone in the first season, so yeah. they purposely avoided it. Those two, it out. those two back to back super chats are really <laughs> inform us about our audience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, here's one about feminism for you. Get ready, Oz. Feminists tend to not really. Oh, this is from Stratocaster893. Thank you. For $10. Feminists tend not to really understand men because of ideological dogma replacing real empathy and understanding. This show suffers from that misunderstanding within the writing. Please discuss. You know, I, I kind of agree. Like, their attempt to depict masculinity in the show where Agamara is like, the women need to stay behind, the men are going to go defend the gap, without actually letting him be in somewhat of an intelligent person to realise, you guys have magic, you're probably the big guns here, maybe yeah. we should lead with you. Uh, it makes them, they don't understand. Like, Masculinity isn't about men always fighting. Of course, any man understands the strengths and weaknesses. Um, and men want to sacrifice for women based on their capacity, okay? That's what good virtuous masculinity is. But it's not without reason. I mean, and don't make us out to be idiots. And then it's like, like on a se separate to this, right? Men are more resilient in fighting. Like, we're better at fighting, that's just a fact. Well, greater muscle mass, dense, greater bone density, so we're yeah. more resistant to injury in that sense. And not just that, but if one of us dies, there's another man that can take a place. If a woman dies, that's like ten babies that have disappeared now. <laughs> no. So well, people are gonna take ten? ten? 
Well, based on you guys as ads so far. <laughs> People are going to take that out of context and see. Oz only feels women are good for making babies. First of all, making babies. They are ba- not just good for making babies. Sandwiches, <laughs> beds. <laughs> Buzz, watch out! I'm <laughs> I, look, I actually think women's capacity to bear and you know bear children, carry children, is a miracle, and Absolutely. they do not be—they're not given nearly enough credit that they deserve. Especially in the modern day, I think the role of motherhood is being yeah. belittled, which they is grow, really dis- like I, I can't stand that. They grow babies um, inside them, but of course, women are capable of many things, not just baby bearing but that is a significant one yeah and it shouldn't be that's under- incredible though they have little baby no, ovens in them no the, when to what you were saying before is if you have a, like a, just going back to basic tribal understanding okay in a tribe they can lose 99 percent of their men and come back in a single generation okay yep. if a tribe loses 99 percent of their women the tribe is dead yep there's no coming back from it, okay? Uh, so there is, even on this base instinct, okay, this understanding going through many, you know, points of clarification in history, men have generally been considered more disposable than women in terms of battle and other things like that. Yeah. I'm not saying women weren't oppressed, but I'm saying there is actually an interesting contrast where situations where men have been oppressed conversely to women and being considered far more disposable. And that's actually something that men volunteer to do to try and protect women and children because of how precious they are. And again, just look at the Titanic, okay? <laughs> Who goes on the boats, right? Um, yeah, don't want to get quality then, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and don't forget us women can fight big eight big men while giving birth. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Don't forget that. Thank you for that one. Yeah, talk about not understanding the dynamics of between men and women and stuff, like... <laughs> And just not understand, like, how could any woman who's had a child think that that, you know, scene is any way realistic? Yeah, nah. And, uh, yeah, the the most extreme aggressive feminists, they don't tend to be, you know, mothers, do they? They, Yeah, no, they don't. They don't tend to be very feminine either. (laughs) Uh, Okay, thank you for the super chat, though. Alright, so... I don't know what the context was for this one, um, because it came up in the middle of the conversation, but it's from The Wall for $5. Maybe the writers are actually trying to do a reverse Adam and Eve in the garden bit here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking with the Sidene Sidar thing, like how they found the uh, the second power, like a woman found it, kind of like the apple. Oh, not the apple, the fruit of knowledge. Are you talking about what the books was trying to describe, or the show? I'm a little lost on the context. No, so like in the books, the woman finds the the other source of yeah, power, yeah. right? That's kind of like you know finding that's the, the yeah. I, I don't know. I don't see that analogy forbidden if fruit. he's referring to the book, the forbidden fruit. But mm-hmm. that's why he's saying it's reverse because mm. in the show, it's the arrogance of man that did this. Okay. Mm. Well, they've certainly reversed, and well, one they were trying to. The show is trying to put blame on men, men for doing it. Where the book was just like, men did this thing and ended up sending them crazy. They did sacrifice themselves, but they weren't trying to say bad men for doing it or women great for doing this. And because if it was trying to do that and you want to go that way, well, it's actually a woman that you know bored into the dark one's prison. Um, yeah. Yes, indeed. But anyway, thank you for the super chat. Sorry if we don't understand the full context. I do. Oz, Oz is smart. All right, from Jared C, five dollars. This is we we already covered, but um, he says she already called she called him the Dragon Reborn. He hadn't been reborn yet, mm-hmm. though he had. But I don't know if they realised the reborn. It might have just uh, been a mistake for, from the people doing the subtitles. In, in terms of the yeah, I don't know. In terms of the mythology of the Wheel of Time. To my understanding, there wasn't a previous dragon before Luz Theron. Yeah. Okay. But he beca- he beca- he was the dragon. Um, Why would he be a dragon? He might have had his soul in the web or whatever previously, though. But, but how did they? This write is it where that? I get frustrated. Like I know canonically, and Robert Jordan kind of set it up that the Wheel of Time setting is kind of a uh, it's it's Earth, but in the vast vast future or some kind of thing like that. I personally don't like that because. We look at the real world. One power doesn't exist, all right? And so the one, where was the Dark One? And he said the Dark One created the, oh, sorry, the, the the wheel. Like, the mythology doesn't fit for our reality. And to try and connect our reality with the mythology of the Wheel of Time, it just doesn't work for me. Mm. Uh, and there's only, like, slight references here and there. And, like, you know, because there, at one point, I think, in the books, they describe a Mercedes-Benz symbol, but they don't know what it is, but it's like a, you know... It could have just been some symbol. It doesn't mean it's uh, Mercedes-Benz. Well, you know, that's why I just don't like that kind of, you know, connection. I don't know what got me onto that. 
What was this? <laughs> <laughs> the, the dragon being called. Oh the yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so the fact that I got me onto that, you know, discussion because how often is Rand getting spun out in the wheel? And if that's the case, did, was there a version of the Dragon Reborn in our reality? Like, are they being spun out again? But it does. The book doesn't seem to be like the. For instance, the um, Heroes of the Horn. Mm. They get reborn fairly regularly, right, in the Wheel of Time world. But you know. Where were they in our reality? Where are they in the modern world? Oh, like the mythology isn't truly carrying through. So. Um, so why is he called the dragon? Is he just the strongest male channeler? Well, see, again, there's no actual mytho creature dragon in the books, and so the dragon is like a word that they've lost their meaning from. Might have been from our time when we had mytholo mythological dragons and stuff. I just um, want to know why they arrived at that name and said, "You're this thing." It means very thing of great power. Okay, I think. And with um, great power oh, comes oh. great arrogance <laughs> and destruction of the world because of that. All right, but we shall continue. Thank you. All right, Knight James the Second. Merry Christmas to Shad, my Merry writing Christmas. sensei. Ooh. Oz, my spirit animal. <laughs> Nathan, the skinny one. <laughs> <laughs> For now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and Red Song. I mean Lara Croft. I mean, Shad's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Please accept this small gift from a long-time fan. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. And Merry Thank Christmas you well, to you. I'm very. They remembered me as well. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be your spirit animal. <laughs> Not in a weird way, though. Not like in a gift mm. way. So, you're picturing elephant, whale... <laughs> <laughs> I would have accepted walrus. Uh, I would have accepted pig. I would have taken pig. We love you, Oz. Sorry. I look. I did not make fun of Oz's. What I don't think is actually large. I'm not but, offended. But Oz would make fun of himself so much that I've just he's made me go onto the bandwagon. It encourages me to drink more of this. <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not offended. I'm not offended by reality. Okay. <laughs> Unlike some people like that are my mortal enemies. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Moving um, on. Dabby four ninety nine. Hi Shad, just got on here after watching some of Brandon Sanderson's live stream. Have you read any of his comments yet? Uh, bit of a busy Not that. yet, yeah. we have been a bit busy. <laughs> I, I, in terms say? of re I've re read some of his comments on Reddit and stuff about things that he um had advised against but also things that he liked and other stuff and so Daniel Green. I don't know. Hey, I like Daniel. He's a good guy. You right? can be a fan. I'm allowed to not be a fan of people. You are. You are. But I'm not going to. Not the same I thing. Derogatory. Yeah. About yeah. Them. Well. Anyway, we'll just leave that there. Moving on. Moving yes, on. Yes. Moving on. Um, uh, Adam Wolf Wolford. I'm glad the Dark Towers. Glad we got Dark Tower series was iced after that terrible movie. <laughs> Us Dark Tower fans miss. Mm. I liked that. I liked it. I actually liked the movie. Really? It's Matthew McConaughey. I, I, oh, I haven't watched it. Oh, he's having fun. Watched it. Um, I can only hope this happens with the time to get to stop this abomination before it goes too far. Uh. Usually, like, you hate abortion, right? But for mm. this show, it wouldn't be the worst <laughs> thing. Abort, quickly! <laughs> Sorry, it just the comments just reset to start again. I had to <laughs> scroll through again. And look, we're doing our best. If we do miss a super chat, we apologise. Yes, I, mm. I do my best here. <laughs> All right, Edgar, the knowledge keeper for nine ninety nine. Uh, contradiction: Moraine says she still can't lie, but if she's severed from the power, then she should be able to lie mm -hmm. because she's no longer bound to her past. Yes, um, and we did point that out, but she might not be aware of it because. Uh, they're it's such a forced habit by now. Exactly, and um, uh, there's a revelation in the books which indicates that the Aes Sedai are not aware of that fact that they might be out of lie once they're cut off from the source. So, we'll see how that plays out, I guess. Mm -hmm. But still, thank you for the chat, we do appreciate it. Yes. Uh, Jared C, um, for $5, says, Isn't Elaine the one that gets chained by a Suldarm? <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> Spoilers, and it's wrong anyway. Yeah. Um, they left her whole family and city out of the show. So they have missed some bit yeah. of major characters. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, and so both, there are events, oh, there are events for every character that's supposed to be happening in the next book, which are completely messed up now. Um, they might be trying to chase Pardon Fane um, because they needed an excuse to chase him. And so, again, 
Is that why they didn't have the Hornet Day year at the Eye of the World? Because they needed Pat and Payne to get it and it would have been like... I think yeah, there were better ways, but... Yeah, things. It's so dumb having the Hornet Day year just under the throne <laughs> under and Dara. I was like, gee, it's... Come on, people have been searching for that thing for thousands of years. And you're telling me not only has it been just sitting under the throne, they used it <laughs> not long ago? <laughs> I just, I can't get over the fact that they, so they didn't want Perrin to be in a fight with these people. So mm. they just got rid of him for a little bit because he heard something. And then he comes back and they're all dead. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, you're right. Like, there was the fight. Did they, Either they thought that that's a fight Perrin would not win and he would die or they actively wanted him to not get any action no, and they took him away from that they could have been like oh he gets in a fight but he gets disarmed or something like that right Yeah, but, but they just didn't want there's him there's no fight. reason for the Fade not to kill him they would have to like I was hoping that Perrin would just call some wolves and go berserk and the wolves would help take out Fades and mm. force them to retreat because of wolf power but no, he's, he's just another thing. They want him to do the wave the leaf thing. Have you noticed that I tend to throw? Yeah, when yeah I, like, I think I, I, I know, it's like, I don't know. I, it's my security thing. It's just, I need something to take my radio. It's better than the drinks. Yes. Anyway, moving um, on. Thank you for the chat. Um, Bob Lakewood is here. Uh, Sienna Cruz is here. Sean Chen? Sean Chen. That's all. Sean Chen. Sean Chen. have always been the worst part of the wheel of so, well, they were a great antagonist. The resolution with the Shon Chen in the books, personally, I found massively dissatisfying because mm. I hated them so much. Um, and we'll leave it there. I don't want spoilers. Uh, and and I wouldn't change it, though, if I was making adaptation because this is Robert Jordan's work. I, I, I wouldn't make it to my preferences. That's just arrogance. <sighs> They're just a part of Wheel of Time, that's all. Yeah, and so obviously Robert Jordan had his reasons for the resolution of the Shon Shen, and it might be to how he wanted things to kind of... He probably wasn't planning on writing further works, but maybe he wanted the struggle to kind of continue and that they have this... He wanted the conversation about power and, and stuff and what the Shon Shen represented in that regard and their treatment of it to be uh, something t for people to discuss maybe further on. I still don't like it. Like, oh, man, do not like the Shon Shen. I like it when every time the Shon Chen got what was given to them, I was like, yes! Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this one from Andrew Felsher. Um, this is for you, Oz. Oh. Could I quickly clarify something? I'm not saying I don't necessarily like the uh, cultural design of the Shon Shen and everything. They're very consistently made and written, written for all those things. I don't like them on, uh, like, pers like I, di I find what they do very... Uh, dissatisfied in terms of I, I hate them as a culture but not for the way they're written they're great antagonists for that reason I like seeing him get beaten anyway okay yeah you, you oppose their morals and uh, yes yes life choices. <laughs> exactly very much so all right back to this one for Oz mm -hmm. um, from Andrew Felsher can Oz say I think this is re-gags uh, re so it might be to the gags at the mouth um, but my tongue <laughs> How do, I, how do I do that while choking, though? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even want to attempt just, just, just say it in the classic way. Put my tongue! There we go. There, you go. Yeah. there we go. <laughs> Give us another five, I'll do it for another one. <laughs> you would be amazed at what Oz would, be, would do for money. <laughs> I think you would have took that the wrong way. <laughs> And you were all worried about me? Like, again, what I, I've said two things that were a little bit spicy, you know? It was like jokes from 2003. What? I, you're the one taking me. Like, what would I do for money, well, Shad? You're doing this right now. Yeah, to be fair, I, I really have debased myself <laughs> yeah. by coming here, haven't I? <laughs> Alright, this is actually for Oz and Nathan. When are the boys going to read the books? You can listen to the audiobooks. I've started. Never. Why? Because I do like you enjoyed um, Stormlight Archives. You would love Wheel of Time. If you got into Halo, I'd read all of Wheel of Time. There you go. Because the same thing happened. Okay. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There you go. But Nathan has started. Yeah. Good on Nathan. I haven't read it, well, listened to it in a little while because it was a slow burn, and I usually mm -hmm. listen to it on the drive home, which is usually when I'm tired. Five so hours long. <laughs> it's a dangerous behind the wheel. But on weekends and stuff, I'll listen to it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll get past book one, but. Mm -hmm. But this show and doing these have actually made me want to get into it more, mm. which is good, I think. I don't want to love something that I know is going to die. 
But no, the books are good and they're finished. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, like, you're yeah. not going to be disappointed when you read the books. I prefer. It'll to make die. you hate the show more. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but can make me hate the show more. I'll read the books and you nothing will. more than you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this one's from Monch. I, I can't say it. I'm sorry, but it was twenty dollars, and it said, "Here's some money just to hear Lady Shadowversity's pretty voice." Merry Christmas. Oh. She Good does. Me. She does have a beautiful voice. I agree. <laughs> And thank you for the super chat. <laughs> but my drink! Uh, <laughs> serves you right, you pig. <laughs> what? I'm drinking my drink! <laughs> you know, you're making it noisy! It was like noxious. Noxious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not safe here! I'm gonna I mean, just eat one day, he's gonna come... Pat you on the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, I oh, I scared the life out of him the other day. You that almost was... killed me just there. <laughs> I almost drowned on Mango, which is a great way to go, but still. <laughs> so I wanted to do the land hello, and so I stood by the door here, and then Oz walked in, and I like he didn't see me at all. And I literally just head on trying to hello, and I was. <laughs> <laughs> like head <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> I'm being tortured. Send help. No, this is just getting you back for all the stuff you get at me. You know, you know it even. When up. have I ever I done think... anything to spur your anger? Name one single time I've ever done anything wrong. I don't even need to go there. Let's next chat. <laughs> Okay, there was that one video where I had that music clip playing. That was one time. What about the sort like when we're doing the stream and we're looking at which swords from Amazon and stuff? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, special sword. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To be okay, fair, move, move the movie guy. Thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. He knows. <laughs> I have not done nothing. Yeah. Wipe your beard though. You've got drink on it. <laughs> All right. That opening with Lewis Theron was pure character assassination. Lewis Theron did what he did because they were desperate and losing the war and could not decide on a plan. Yeah, here they were depicting the world a tranquil, perfect place. There was no serious war or anything like that. And that was his actions that screwed everything up and it was his arrogance they didn't need to do it. It was like, it's like he wasn't breaking free, but he just wanted to go and um, cage him. Even, and they, by implication, the caging was just something that they chose to do to not prevent destruction because the world was perfectly fine. Like mm. there was, everything was, and so you're right. I agree. It was. You just can't help it. Right now, this one's from Superman. If he wasn't scared of green rocks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is a great name. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and he says, "Wait a minute. This isn't Friday Night Tights." Oh. It's Friday Night Nights. Though. Some of us might be appearing on Friday Night Tights sometime What's Friday night in the time? future. What's Friday Night Tights? What's Friday Night Tights? So it's a live stream that Nerdrotic does. Um, oh. And so Nerdrotic and the crew, that's a really good one. I enjoy those guys. Hmm. We might or might not be appearing on it sometime in the next month. I don't know. That's all I can say. That was cryptic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I yeah, don't wait. understand yeah. the context, but I will read it anyway. Okay. Uh, Bandana Games, Shad, I need you and the boys to cameo on Epic NPC Man with Viva La Dirtly Merry Christmas. Oh, hey, we would love to, but I mean, you know, they're not too far away. In terms of distances, New Zealand is New far Zealand. away. Uh, they're a busy group. Depends. Depends. They we'll might just want to let us in. But I do love Viva to love it. Viva de, de, de Viva la Dirt League. De, 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 de league. Viva great. Derp Shad. Derp. They're great. I love them. Alright, from Keith Mullenby, five dollars. Portal World with same names and Schubert differences. Land Fear. Another turn would have books as history and new names and characters. Yep. Okay, yeah, interesting take. And so yeah, this is just like a um, a nightmare alternate reality, essentially, that Rand was seeing, because they're saying if this was another turning of the wheel, there should be records of this turning of the wheel, mm. um, uh, or references or other things, you know, 
I actually, the tur an actual turning the wheel to reach the same point, you'd have to pass through so much, because technically it's, you'd have to pass, pass through our regular Earth history to get back to the Wheel of Time point, that there'd be nothing left over from the last turning. Um, but I, I still just, I hate that excuse. We don't want another turning. We wanted a depiction of the same turning of the Wheel of Time. It's just an excuse to try and get people to say, you should be okay that this is a complete bastardization of the source material. Alright, this one um, is 499 saying Team Nathan. Hey! Woo! We finally got one! <laughs> I'm worth something! <laughs> $5! Five dollar. Five dollar. Five dollar. No, no, 499 499 <laughs> I'm happy with that, I can go home happy. <laughs> T20's Grunt, $5. Do you think Barney Harris left voluntarily after seeing some early screenings? There are rumours, and because they're rumours, I don't want to repeat them yet, but I am starting to suspect that it wasn't necessarily... Uh, um, uh, when I say his fault, I think he did... I already, I'm trying to. I'm starting to reference rumours because it sounded like he broke contract. But I think his reasons for breaking contract, I'm starting to suspect he might have had his justified reasons for doing so. Uh, we don't. Nothing is confirmed, but man, if I saw where this is the, where that the show was going this way, um, I'll be like, I'm getting out of here before Ray wants me to do a certain scene. I would find it appropriate. I don't know. Ah, oh, that's why they're making him evil. No, no I'll, we're not repeating any. We don't know. We don't I didn't say. No. Okay. I Moving know on. What's going on, sir? So. <laughs> but they went out of their way to assassinate Matt and it seems like out of malice after he left almost and, and it makes me wonder why like this is excessive destruction for that character and look what stupidity would you think you'd be doing by assassinating a character to get back at an actor who left if you have issues with it rumors I, I'm, I'm sorry I don't want to repeat it but they slip out sometimes but that's what some people have been I don't think that's true but because like you're, you're ruining the character for the fans and why I don't know how to get it Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, hopefully, I don't know, maybe Barney will actually state something, but he probably has a really big non-disclosure, you know, thing that if he says anything, <laughs> he'll Didn't be he sued really contract anyway? Jeff Bezos <laughs> would firstly come yeah, to his house. Yeah, it's Amazon. Barney, if you're watching this, we would love to talk to you about it. We would give you a platform to reach the people who would be sympathetic to what you have to say, honestly. Mm. So. Sorry it happened to you, bud. Mm. Not right. Well, we don't know what happened, okay? Um, if anything, uh, look, uh, yeah, uh, wish him well, okay, and hopefully nothing too bad went down, if it did, I don't know. Right, right so next one, um, the MZA, um, for me, Luke Skywalker is the epitome, I love Arthur, but Luke was a grey and super Jedi, and Disney killed him, it's not good. Yep. <sighs> Why do they ruin heroes, you know? I oh, can tell you why, yeah, Chuck. Would you yeah. like to know why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. We feel for you, though, yeah. mate. Grumpy Smurf, um, clarified you, Oz, Red Sonja is from Conan. Yeah, okay. So there's the movie Red Sonja, which isn't Conan. You don't want to watch the movie. Movie bad. Movie bad? The movie Red Sonja is horribly bad. Okay, so But what? the character is an iconic pop culture character, mainly from her comic book runs. Okay. Okay, yeah. Oh, and the book series. There's a book series. Oh, what am I? The book series started first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the book series actually have a pretty. I've never read them, but they have a higher reputation. And then they got the comic book adaptations with slight changes, but she was really popular in the comic books as well. But the movie is don't don't even don't even bother. The Conan the Barbarian is one of my favorite fantasy movies. It's so good. Alrighty. Next next, next chat. Right, Azriel V, four ninety nine. Do you think this kind of stuff Changed your politics or reaffirmed it, and then there's an after one saying Team Lady Shad. Hey. Oh. Uh, mo like mostly reaffirmed. I've held the same politics for a while. Um, actually, I have switched. I used to consider myself way back a feminist because I thought, hey, a feminist is about quality and everything. And then this is way back, right? But then I actually started to listen to some of the arguments, and I was like, okay. For instance, I don't even want to mention the uh, person, in, but there was a critical feminist down there uh, criticizing pop culture, and I was like, all right, if they have criticisms against pop culture and they have logical arguments, uh, I'll give them a try. And so I decided to read one of their essays, 
and it was such a cherry picked piece of garbage I couldn't believe it it was like you are twisting everything around to fit the narrative you want what a piece of crap I went out of my way to give him a give him a chance right no nah. um, and so perhaps that's actually made me more uh, I've always held the same values but it's been but it's been a process to find out who is actually reflecting those values and sifting it through what they're claiming because some people claim good values and then when you really find out what they're saying it's like guys seriously you are trying to subvert some fundamental important things in society like wholesome things I used to be an SJW when I was in high school because mm -hmm. that we were just indoctrinated into it mm -hmm. you know? then when I get out of high school and I start working around 2015 2016 certain election happened <laughs> I learned a lot of things <laughs> I was got red pilled but yeah so interesting comment and um, what about yours uh, I okay I think since working here I've become more political oh. and more politically in tune. Just, Just a little bit. Um, but like I said, I don't think I don't think my values have changed, but I've mm. become more aware on politically yeah. who is supporting those values. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas yeah. You still and, watching ABC? Oh my god. Oh. You know what's annoying us? They come off my feed, and it's like news articles, and I just scroll by and say, now if I touch it, they'll keep coming, and then one day I'm gonna be scrolling my phone and Oz is gonna be like, oh ABC. <laughs> you, so, you know if you just if you see one and be like, hey Oz, is this true? I know. No, no, because no. Uh, no, that's not how you. That is I can't how, trust you for everything. How do you check news? <laughs> how do you check? If news? that was the case, I'd be believing most guns don't have safeties. So, how do you check news? That's my question. Well, I mean, you want to hear it from multiple sources that you've tested and found to be reliable, um, uh, and uh, and. Uh, I mean, I try and hear, listen to stuff from the other side as well mm. to get a balanced view on things, but I get so annoyed with how much they often try and twist the truth. Yeah, um, well that's the thing. What you do is very close to how I do it. Mm -hmm. I, I see what the other side says, and whatever is the opposite of what they're saying is the truth. That's mm -hmm. my personal... Look, no, that's just no, my no, personal, no, opinion. No. You don't, personal opinion. You don't gauge the truth by people's opinions. You gauge the truth by facts, truth. And then when you find people actually saying the truth, then you know they're right. Yes, but mm -hmm. what do they consider to be facts and truth? So well, go it doesn't matter what the they... No, it doesn't matter what they think, because you have to find... Like, we're getting. Thank you for the super chat. We'll keep yeah, moving. <laughs> <laughs> Profit of the dragon, ten dollars. Mm -hmm. Thank all. Thank is that Masima? Masima. Hmm? He's the prophet, isn't he? I yes. forget his name. Yes, Masima. Masima. Thank you for all of you. Uh, thank all four of you for doing these reviews. This stream makes me feel better to have someone with large following speak out. Never thought I'd be a white cloak or make YouTube vids. <laughs> Your book is great, Shad. So who's that from? Prophet of the Dragon. Prophet of the Dragon. Hey, I might have to look at the YouTube videos now. Um, well, yeah, thank you for, and we appreciate. Like, it, yeah. it's crazy. What's like there is such a divide in the viewership of this show. Mm. We have all the cool people. Uh, Ruby Spoons. Uh, this is another Red Sonia comment. Red Sonia is a masterpiece about a stunning and brave human with a PP having his first experience with a monthly visitor directed by M. Egg Swain. What the hell did any of that mean? I don't know, but it's about Red Sonia being a stunning and brave human. Let's go with that. Yeah, something red. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if we don't understand. Maybe there was a joke we missed. Part of or... it might be my reading of it, trying to figure it out. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Still, thank you for the super chat and donation. We do appreciate it. All right. From Mason Blakeney. Thank you, Shad, for what you have done. I'm reading real time now because of you. Mm. Also, I think you got mentioned in FNT on coming on in Jan. I've already announced it. I have to watch that, and I like my time has been limited. But FNT? Friday Night Tights, so that's no erotic. Um, and yes, uh, if they've announced it, we do plan to uh, make an appearance on Friday Wait. Night Tights. Yeah, at least you and me. It depends on Nathan. Like, he's not too into the live streaming thing. He'll be there. He won't what? say anything. Though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll wait for my moment and then say something. I'll just drop yeah. a bomb. You're like um, a little sneaky fellow. Like but that. at the moment, we are looking to uh, join them in January. Mm. Looking forward to it. From Bob Lakewood, twenty dollars. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gives it birth comes again. It's a line from books. Mm. Good work, good gotcha. They could have added such good dialogue and lines. I... 
You ever notice that Rafe Judkins and Robert Jordan are the same initials? Yet one is awful. <laughs> Big yeah, there's a big difference. <laughs> All right. Andrew Valdez, four ninety nine. Earth C is in my opinion on par with Abs, a bit better than Lord of the Rings, and I think could even work as a better movie series. Amazing content by the way, you're amazing. Well, thank you for that. Um, yeah, I've heard good reports of Earthsea. I've never read any of the material. I've seen two of the adaptations, and I'm, I will never judge Earthsea based on the adaptations. So I know the Studio Ghibli one is considered pretty poor, especially in its adapt adaptation quality. And the other one I watched, who's the who's the black cop in Lethal Weapon ones? Who plays him? Oh, it, Danny Glover. Danny Glover. He's in the um. There's a live action Earthsea um movie, and I think it might have been made by Hallmark or someone. But it's got him in it. It wasn't that great, but um, they tried. But still, that's the only other one earthy thing I've watched. Of course, I wouldn't judge the source material based on it. But hey, if you want to see, is it Danny Glover? Danny Glover. If you want to see Danny Glover in, in an earthy thing, look it up. <laughs> Adrian Martinez dropped dollar ninety nine with no comment. <laughs> well, still, thank you thank for you. the donation. All right, Edgar the Knowledge Keeper nine ninety nine. Apologies, apologies for the typo for my last super chat. I'm so mad about Loyal and Tom. Both are done dirty. Tom was in for such a short time, and the showrunners basically don't know what to do with Loyal. Ah, oh, gosh. Who's Tom? Like, the Gleeman. The Gleeman. Oh, yeah. Is he dead? We well, has he he reappeared? So he's not dead. I, oh. I wouldn't put it past them. They might be killing off Loyal. I, I'm going to say I think they're not. They just want to the suspense. And I like, the how could they, the thing is though they've done such dumb bad things that it's they I wouldn't put it past them I think they're not going to but it's still within their capacity still and if, if they would they killed off loyal there ah oh, what an insult if there wasn't blood I would have said it that uh, one of his books protected him but he didn't even show him carrying my own books the thing is though the, like his depiction was so bad it was distracting his personality was kind of on point like he had some charm here and there but he wasn't doing nearly as important stuff as he was in the book where he revealed that they're Tavirin in the book and then he navigates them through the ways and he like oil well, is great oh gee heartbreaking heartbreaking stuff all right sound engraver two dollars thanks for your great commentary on writing shad well you are welcome i appreciate it Zach Adamson, 1999. I'm just sad. I started reading The Wheel of Time way back when it first came out. I was so excited when they announced the show. Mm. It's just sad. It but is. But y'all at least brought some sunshine into the darkness. Oh, I'm glad we could. I <laughs> Like, that means a lot that we, like, for, especially your hardcore fans of the book, but there's so, at least there's a place that we get, to, they get to hear discussion about the proper problems that exist. Mm -hmm. like, I feel really special that we were able to do something like that for fans. You, at least make it not so depressing. It is depressing, don't get me wrong. Like I'm heartbroken at what they did. And especially when it's one of your... For some people, this was like... Um, I don't, I don't, like what's the term? Like an inform like an informative experience for their experience with fantasy and sometimes storytelling and heroes and things. And stories and pop culture can actually sometimes have a very positive effect on people's growing up. It happened with me. Like the heroes that I loved made me a better person. Hmm. Okay. And so you develop genuinely good, uh, like heartfelt attachments to these stories. And then to see them dragged through the mud, belittled, insulted, ruined, I, it's... It, it's insulting. It's it's going to keep happening. It's not going to stop. <sighs> so I feel I feel for you, but I'm I'm really happy that we can do something to <laughs> like, yeah soften the blow, I guess. But it's yeah still there. All right, from Robert Hyde, ten dollars. In this turning of the wheel, Moradin is a hero. Let it die. <laughs> I win again, Lewis Theron. <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of people referencing that line. I win again, lose there, and because <laughs> of course, in, in, because people have been referencing this in the, like they're turning the wheel, but then they say it's a shadow world that Rand saw when he was doing that thing with Lanfear. But the other one, how many worlds did he see when he saw another playing out of the wheel, and then you know, um, the dark one saying, "I win again, lose there." So many, it he, pretty oh, much would go flicker, flicker, so, flicker, yeah, flicker, just over and, and over he again. would and see a different, different turning of the wheel, mm. and 
the Dark One was basically winning each time, and at the end is like, I win again, lose therein. And so people are saying this is one of those... Well, I wonder well, he like, keeps... This is actually one of those evil turnings of the wheel where the Dark One wins. Mm. And so whenever you hear that reference, I win again, lose therein, as people referencing, like, this is a this is a, a reality that the Dark One is <laughs> winning and in control of. Well, no That's wonder the Dark reference. One keeps winning. His name's Lose Theron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lose Theron. No, he's Rand Thor, and he beats the Dark One. Oh, does he? Awesome! Yay! Will Tyrone, directed by George Lucas. Great job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think wins, really? Like, does he... Whoever wins. Well, actually, actually, <laughs> I'm not saying what happens, because that's not even technically correct. I'm leaving it there. In this You'll show, have to read and find out. Whoever wins, we lose. Because the show's going to be made. The book has a very intriguing ending. It's worth a read. Mm. Right. Heath Mullenby. Five dollars. Will Hopper and the rest pick on Perrin in the wolf dream? Let's see if we can get. But to he deserves dream. it. He's done nothing. Like the wolves initially saw him fighting the white cloaks, mm. and that's where he gets the name Young Bull because he was so aggressive and was like just falling in and impressed the wolves. They're like, "Hey, Young Bull, you got some moves, mate. We like." But this has done nothing. Now it's like his limp rag. That's <laughs> what he is. Wait, so they call well, him Young Bull? Yeah. What? Moving on. Thank you for the chat, though. Okay. I'm cutting Oz off. I know he's going. He's going. Well, I haven't said anything because yeah, no, you said limp rag. I could see the opposite it in of a young your bull. Eyes. See the, the wheels turning. <laughs> All right, Andrew Jackson, seven ninety nine. Would you go on Arccast and talk about the Wheel of Time and gatekeeping with Arc Kibbs? I would happily do that. Mm. Arch, we've uh, played um, uh, Battle Lord with him a couple of times. Yep. Himself. Great lad. Mm. Great wool. Great man. And so I've been keeping an eye on his content and stuff. It'll depend on time, but um, we would like to actually have some chats with some of the other people, you know, talking about pop culture and stuff. So we're going, like I said, Friday night tights and things. So we'll see what happens in the future. And I've been on EFAP heaps of times and love those guys. I'm so. going to be involved on EFAP. <laughs> <laughs> no. They have such a wide range of guests, it's hard for them to pick now. Why can't they make fun of me? <laughs> you, you don't get enough of that here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, I love it. I need more. <laughs> Alright, and this one's from Gunnar. Um, oh, he's explaining the earlier super chat. I said channelers are under attack. My channel is fine. Oh, okay. So he's talking oh, okay. about the channelers. Mm -hmm. um, Scarfy the Strange, $5. What's the over or under on Sadin and Sadar, Sadar being renamed Sad X? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You sneaky devils. They're good at this, aren't they? <laughs> I should be reading these things. <laughs> Strike that you, one. You would understand it. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I wouldn't be able to read it that well, though. <laughs> I can read it, I just can't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how bad do y'all expect the Amazon Lord of the Rings series to be? Awful! <laughs> it's gonna suck! It's going to suck so bad! I hate it already! Ah! Oh, I'm done. Um, yeah. The, I've been burnt a little bit in trying. I came in and tried to give the show every benefit that it really out. Did. And that has jaded me. Like, I, I want to say about Lord of the Rings we need to wait until it comes out for, to see how good or bad it is but all the bad signs that we saw on Wheel of Time are the same bad signs that we're seeing with the uh, Amazon Lord of the Rings and it's not looking good as a result so I do not have much hopes unfortunately it's gonna it's going to be the worst thing ever <laughs> The worst thing ever. I hope I'm wrong and uh, proven wrong, and that is great, but at the moment... Mm. It's going to be the most expensive turd ever taken. <laughs> okay? You think space station turds are expensive? No. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, Amazon Wheel of Time. Okay. That's there a... we go. What do you think, Nathan? It's going to suck. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Just suck? <laughs> it's going to... Okay, it's going to be... I'm going to get mad. You're going to get mad? I'm going to get mad. Can I've I... never seen him mad. I don't think I'll get as mad as Wheel of Time. Because no, I don't think so either. they're not remaking the Lord of the Rings films to try and subvert the, that great story. Whereas Wheel of Time, they have bastardized the story mm. and they are presenting Wheel of Time to a much larger global audience than the original books had and presenting it as this steaming pile of crap and it's making it reflect really bad on the quality of the books and that's mm. legitimately 
angering me. I can't like that. But with Lord of the Rings, everyone knows the classic movies. And so if even if it's a steaming turd, right, this new adaptation, the mo the movies, the great, will just stand as its condemnation for how good it was and look what, you know. You underestimate mm -hmm. them, Shad. <laughs> well, we'll see. The, the next super chat is also about it. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Perry for five dollars. If you think Amazon's version of Wheel of Time is bad, then I'm wagering their version of Lord of the Rings will be much worse. By the way, greetings from Kingsport, Tennessee. Oh, hey, greetings Tennessee. to you, sir. That's where they invented tennis, isn't it? <laughs> <sighs> I'm sorry, my my chat's just reset there, so <gasps> I've got to try to find it again. But in the meantime, I'm feeling dead inside. <laughs> but don't worry, I feel better. It's Christmas time. We've got some good things coming. So I hope you, everyone has a good holiday. Just yeah, this is over now. We don't need to think about it all the time until next media. season. <laughs> well, actually, I like. I don't want to watch next season. Like I said, if I was a casual viewer, I would have noped out of this at episode five. Um, but I think just as reviewers, people want to see our reaction. And if we're going to be the only ones calling out this crap, mm. I think it's our duty to review season two. And we'll do it for you guys. Bad. And full of errors. errors. And this is, this is the duty we have taken up. This is the pledge we have made as knights. Yep. This is what the Night's Watch was made to do. Mm. So if we need to crusade, we will be the ones to crusade. There we go. Yep. All right, next super chat. <laughs> Alright, the next one is what makes a good fight slash battle scene when writing a novel? That's a much more complex question than I can't give justice to. Stakes. Because it's not only that, there are a lot of levels that make a fight or battle enjoyable or engaging and it's not necessarily one thing, there are multiple ways to execute it and make it enjoyable. There are things to avoid, okay, and so you want proper uh, consequences, setup and payoffs and everything, you don't want... Um, Plot armor, I have more complicated feelings on already. It's, it's a long conversation. <laughs> this might be a video in Already, episode. yeah, it's already a video. Shadowverse uh, video. Because um, technically every person in your book has a type of plot armor. Anyone you choose not to die, is that's a choice by the writer. And so, it's a, so it's what you want to do is make things believable. Mm. And uh, that's you want the fight scenes to feel believable and the battles to have good payoffs, make it engaging and stuff. But... Believability is not our thing. You can make a very believable, boring, you know, piece of crap. And so it's also about pacing and setup, and uh, and uh, there's a lot of stuff. I have plot armor. I'm still here. You are. Yeah. So maybe I'll try and do uh, something more comprehensive later on. Sorry, I can't do justice to that question because it's a big question at the moment. <laughs> What's up on Eddie Max of Andor 499? What's more cringy, this finale or Michael Scott from The Office? This finale. This Hands finale down. for sure. Michael Scott was at least lovable. Yeah. You know? He had some redeemable <laughs> qualities. This show is uh... This show, there's nothing good about it. Definitive. There we go. Like, yeah. how many seasons of Michael Scott did we watch? All of the ones that he was in, then the show sucked when he left. But <laughs> this show is just it's awful true. all the way through. Alright, the next one. Pavlo John. Wasn't Rand supposed to find his dragon banner at the Eye of the World? Did I miss that in the finale? By the way, great job with work. We love the videos. Thank you. Someone yeah, he was it. supposed to find the Dragon Banner, the Horn of Valir, and one of the seals to the Dark One's prison. Nothing. Nothing now. Now they just find broken Queen Diar, and they don't explain why that's significant, and then Ran leaves. Why did he leave it? Oh, it's just, I'm going, oh, because he doesn't want to be, go crazy and kill people? Is that the reason so. why? Doesn't, you know, worry about saving his friends or anything, or... Yeah. Just wants you know, they, they saw that they were getting attacked by Trollocs. You know, find out if they survived or not. That might be worth now. He's just, no, he's just, he's got to go. If, if she thinks it's just the first battle, why would she let the dragon? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're absolutely right. My wife came in with a zinger. Uh, if Moraine feels that this isn't the first, like the last battle, she would never let Rand out of her side. Also, not in a hundred years. She's been looking for Rand for how long? Exactly, because if if this isn't the last battle, that means the last battle is coming, and she now has found the dragon, and she's letting him go off on his own. Oh wow! It just she keeps... at least be you know take me with you. <laughs> it's just getting worse. This show just gets worse the more you think about it. Oh, wow. All right, next is from Phantom Dragon, 1475. Shad, book two, when? 
Uh, so I have a video on my channel called When Is My Next Book? That's sorry, on Shadowversity. And uh, I explain it there. So I'm actually working not on the sequel of Shadow the Conqueror. I wrote Shadow the Conqueror to be a more standalone. It has sequel potential and I do have sequels planned, but it's a more self-contained story and I purposely wrote it as that with a distinct kind of message and through line. And I wrote it so I had uh, um, validity and I could leave it, let it rest for a bit and work on something else in the meantime. And so that's what I'm working on at the moment. I haven't had found too much time to write recently, and so I hope to be able to get back to it uh, and finish it off. It's more than halfway done, and I'm really happy with how this next book is coming. And it's a good, strong, and medieval fantasy with a good emphasis on the medieval, like it's gonna. But that's not the selling point. The, the selling point of this book is the characters. I'm loving the characters; they're really enjoyable, and there's a great arc and story they're going through. So I hope to be able to bring it to you guys uh, in another year. Hopefully not too. Hopefully it'll be done in the next year. Mm, let's see. So there's your answer at the moment. Alright, so next one from Brandon Knott. The best thing that can happen in Season 2 is for Rand to wake up back on Tam's farm the day before Valentine and start over with the books for the script. Oh, they yes. won't do it, but I agree. Like, you just start again. Yeah, like, just retcon this mess. But they won't do it, because Amazon, like... They don't have the balls, and um, it has such a strong, almost cultish following at the moment, where people will not see reason. Like there are objective faults in this that, if you point it out, you'll just get banned on those subreddits. Well, to be fair, we have a cultish following, and I'm really liking them so far. No, no, you know why? Because if we say something wrong, they disagree with. They call us out. How many things have they cracked us on? Um, in my uh, when I try and say something for books, like they're they're they like this is what's the difference between a cult and uh, people who actually. Uh, our individual self thinkers. If we get something drastically wrong, they will crucify us. Mm. And I appreciate you, you when you get something yeah, little wrong. Even little. If we get something like, and I like, I love you guys, and I appreciate that you do that. Hold us to the fire, and they do. That's why we know it's not a cult, right? And we're not, and we want that. If people, if we get something wrong, we want to be corrected, and we're not going to ban people. But if you really want to see a cult-like following. How dare anyone? This show is the best show ever. It's better than the books. Nothing's wrong with it. And if you point out anything that's objectively wrong, they will not see reason. Mm. And in fact, you're a bad person for pointing it out. Mm. And a racist. Oh, they might even go that far. They've been calling people pretty bad names for disliking this show. We've already been attacked in some ways like that. So, yeah. Right, Clifton 3D. Hashtag Shad for FNT. Hashtag Nerd Rotten. Hey, yep, Friday night tights. So we're looking forward to it, fellas. Can't wait. Alright, the wall, five dollars. Oz got my Garden of Eden's reference correct. The power is the fruit and they're trying to write it so that man corrupted it. Okay, that's an interesting I I could see it interpreted that way. Mm -hmm. Alright, from Seth Cruz. Uh, thanks, Shad up oh, for twenty dollars. Oh well, thank you. Thanks, Shad and Night's Watch, for letting me grieve the butchering of these beloved characters <laughs> along with you. I'll never recover from seeing the Dai Shan reduced to a simpering, teleporting lapdog. Tai Sha Night's Watch. Tai Sha, what's his name? Seth Cruz. Tai Sha, Seth Cruz. Who's the Dai Shan? A slan. Yeah, they've ruined. Ah. They've, oh, they've ruined so much. Lan was so awesome. And Perrin and Rand and Matt, they ruined everything! <laughs> so good! I win again, Louis Ferry. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's your mantra now, Louis. <laughs> 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 Alright, Scarfy the Strange again for five dollars. For my last super chat, Happy Bell Time, what I think is Two Rivers Christmas. To Shad, his queen, and his two squires. Thank you. We're knights, okay? You're We're not upgrading. squires. <laughs> <laughs> uh, RJ, Jeremy, so Robert Jordan, I guess, was going to write Sian Chen. Sean Chen. Sean Chen, thank you. Sean Chen continuation uh, afterwards of Tuan and Hubby going to retake the empire. See, well, thank you. I, I didn't know that, and I appreciate you saying Hubby to avoid spoilers. Uh, because that might explain why he left it so open. Because there was a lot un, like not resolved with the Shon Chen, which I found really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And you'd think Hubby would have something to say about it. And if there was going to be a whole arc that Robert Jordan was, you know, um, intending, that would have been great. Unfortunately, we lost him before he could have done that. Um, 
And so that's what we got, but it would explain a lot, honestly. How dare he die on us like that? So rude. It's not his fault. <laughs> I'm sure he would have stayed if he could. Yeah. Maybe the other side was better. Maybe he saw this coming. <laughs> Alright, Space Cake, happy Christmas to all. I'm curious, how often do you see crazy spiders? Tarantulas, slash widows, slash funnel webs, etc. Oz! <laughs> there was a spider up there. <laughs> oh, there is! There's one up there right now, by the microwave! Oh, I think you're right. I think there is. Look! Yeah. I saw it. Ah! <laughs> Where's the spray? <laughs> Is the spray over there? It's, You're not kidding! It's is, like that big! <laughs> this is an Oz acting! What the hell?! It's closest to me! So hang on, hang on. You summon <laughs> demons! <laughs> Sorry, let's get this on camera. No! Should I? Okay. Alright. It's not me. Hang on, hang on. Oh, oh. What is that?! It's a giant mushroom! Do you get it? Where's a bloody spray? Kill it! Oh, it's, too, it's too dark. It's too dark. Kill it! Kill it now! Where is the spray? It's over there! <laughs> there it is, everyone. You summon demons out of words! Where is the spray? Oh, here it is. Alright, ready? You want to see? No! Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! Get this on camera! Get this on camera! Alright, ready? Ready? Wait, 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 it's too dark, it's too dark, it's too dark. Shout. Okay, ready? go. Ready? Ah! It's still going. Ah! <laughs> I'm never touching this thing again! <laughs> okay. It's struggling like naked! Kill him! It's struggling from life! Where is it? It's right there! You know, <laughs> I think you screamed louder than me there, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Look at it go, it's, it's holding on, it's trying. What was it doing there? <laughs> Where did it come from? <laughs> so, just so context, Oz actually has a bit of arachnophobia, we're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> come on, die already! Get a sword, Shad, get a sword! It's not dying! I'm getting a sword. Oh, wait, no. I will bless this axe with the venom of my enemy. No, no. it's a foam one. You'll ruin it. I'll kill it. Come on, just die already. Move out of the way, Squire. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to have to squish it, I think. Just get out of the way. It's not moving. Come on. There we go. It's a servant of the dark one, apparently. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to lose it. Can you? Can someone give me some wipes? So, or it's a bottle of evil. Above you. you get it? He, he's right, at the dog. Right, right, he's definitely ready? no devil, oh, guys. So can you slay a spider? Ready? Spider! Take my hand. Ah! Dead. Now, if you really want to see Oz freak out... Uh, no! <laughs> <laughs> and he's gone. <laughs> it's in the bin, Oz! Mogedian, <laughs> the spider. <laughs> it's Mogedian. <laughs> that poor spider even got named. It, it, it's gone, it's gone, it's in the bin, Oz. <laughs> <laughs> that was both hilarious and horrifying, according to Chuck. <laughs> Where is it? It's in the bin. Now, swear on it. Now, I swear nobody it's in super chat about snakes or I'm out. Of <laughs> Where is it? It's in the bin, I, I promise. Don't trust you. <laughs> <sighs> You even got some behind the scenes footage of the uh, of the studio. Yep. <laughs> so yes, uh, we do have to deal with um, some spiders now and then in Australia. Yeah, now, now that you mention it, <laughs> yeah, let me put you in. Oh, that is just too hilarious. 
Oz's kryptonite, apparently. <laughs> Literally asking our spiders, and we look up, and there's a massive one. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just asked if Oz has refused to watch the Spider-Man movies. No, they're fine. They're people. I'm sorry, I just don't like things with eight legs, 15 eyes, and that sting you with poisonous venom. And they can get anywhere. They can cling to any surface. They're demons, people. I felt a sudden urge. Oh. I felt the surge of bravery that I had this in my hands. And then I saw the thing. Literally, the... This big! Ah, oh, that was about. Yeah, it was massive! <laughs> so, yeah, I saw a spider up there um, before. <laughs> it's not there anymore. When were you gonna tell me? I wasn't. Because I knew how you would react. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? <laughs> I was going to quietly, in my Nathan way, just remove it from the studio. <sighs> that, I would have appreciated that. Yeah, you probably that. wouldn't have flattened it like because... that. You would have just taken it outside. <laughs> yeah. Or oh, maybe if it wriggled. So I usually just was squishing with my hand. That one was a bit too big to do a hand squish. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll put some cloth in between my hand and that. that time. <laughs> so, thank you, Space Cake, for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that's like internet gold. You can't. You Someone can't, clip that. Oh, clip that. That was good. Just, you can't predict things like that. It's just <laughs> 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 I'm on edge. Stop making fun of me. I'm sorry. We love you all. So what are you afraid of? What do you fear the most? I will bring it into reality and then I'll scare you and we'll all have a good laugh. So if you didn't think I was on edge. Yeah, this isn't acting. This is all genuine Oz. <laughs> I'm putting oh, this yeah. away before I hurt someone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm gonna read the comments and hopefully they're nice to me. <laughs> That's a lot of laughing faces. <laughs> I did not piss myself. My belt is too tight for that. <laughs> Next super chat. Okay, uh, Simon Bedwell, five pound. If Rand used Balefire, Moraine Stilling would have undone. Also, what did you think of this Sean Chan armor? Ah. Uh, I didn't get a close enough look, honestly. I'd want to rewatch it. I was, look too. I was actually focusing on the uh, soul dumb really closely, and they, the mouth covering distracted me a bit. And then the that's the Damani. The uh, Damani, okay. That's the Damani and the soul dumb. Uh, and then the channeling of the tidal wave. I ha want to have another look. But someone got this spider. I would again, Oz. <laughs> 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 uh, oh. One person says that they laugh so hard they almost blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a good time here. <laughs> Especially when it's an Oz's demise. <laughs> now it's all spider emojis. <laughs> and a few cobwebs too. <laughs> <laughs> $10. They didn't mention Lartra's failed plan to seal the Dark One at the beginning. They only show her shaming Lewis Blues, but Lartra is the only reason Lewis' plan failed by not letting women help shame Lartra. Yes, that's why that was like it sounded like she purposely made him fail. Someone commented that Itsy Bitsy Spider crawled up Oz's leg and I checked. <laughs> Sorry. But I, that scene depicts that. See, they, Blue Seren says, we will succeed if you help us. And she's like, no. Which is like, she... Oh. Oh. Yeah, I agree. We're cutting all that from the spice story, by the way. <laughs> I, I don't want to see it. I saw it from like three metre distance. I don't want to see it zoomed in and... <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to watch it. I won't force you. you you're going to find a way now, I just realised. 
You gonna no, no, I, I won't force you, but it's definitely staying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right. Um, interior diesel, diesel? Five dollars. The Wheel of Time show is so bad it makes me want to give up writing. Might become a mirror inspector. There's a job I can really see myself doing. <laughs> You should be a writer. <laughs> if you're like, if you've got talent, we need more good writers in the world. Clearly, cause, please. Oh. All right, and here's a ten dollar one about Red Sonia. Red Sonia with a Y in the in the Sonia mm -hmm. was a character created by Robert E. Howard that had nothing to do with Conan. Red mm -hmm. Red Sonia with a J was a character created by Roy Thomas in the 1970s, based on Howard's character. Uh -huh. Yeah, because there's different adaptations um, of Red Sonja, so there's a book series and then, yeah. Uh, Ammo Manda Rake, five pound. I just hope they don't go near the Malazan Book of the Fallen as it's my favourite fantasy series. <sighs> At this point, gosh, I'd be afraid of anyone doing an adaptation unless the bright has direct control, really. Mm. <laughs> You're so paranoid. <laughs> I'm not paranoid because someone just said, there's a spider and there's a spider! <laughs> okay, I said it because I'd seen it before. Why didn't you tell me? Because this is how you react! <laughs> I was cooking there this morning! <laughs> and you were fine! <laughs> you survived! <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Plus, the thing was there afterwards. How did it get there? Just climb through, you know, or it could go through the aircon. No! <laughs> That's not possible! <laughs> We're taking napsaws, it could just, you know, spiders crawl through. And... Oh, don't, don't! <laughs> <laughs> I don't like okay. spiders, guys. <laughs> it, it's okay. It'll get to me before it gets to you if there's another one. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> behind you, well done. Alright. Uh, Almighty Ace is twenty dollars. Just got here from work, love you guys, been with Shadowversity for years and this channel is great. Thank you. Question. Remember those videos you used to make about what weapons mythical monsters would use? Any mm -hmm. chance of those coming back? I kinda of started to run out of um uh, the classic ones mm -hmm. and it felt like I was really reaching I mean, there was one I was wanting to do maybe on satyrs and stuff. What's a satyr? Uh, so, you know, the, 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 like fawns? I don't know, oh, yeah. maybe on the maybe fawns. The ones you murdered. No, no, they, they got their goat leg. Yeah, feet. you murdered them in D&D. Did I? Yes. Oh, yeah, in D&D, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but all, I, don't, I did all the classic ones, and so, you know, where to kind of go from there? Um, maybe I'll still make one, you know, just for old time's sake. But I did want to hit all the main main creatures, um, and some had far more interesting uh, conclusions than others. And those are the ones I kind of like to do if they have a really interesting conclusion. Where if it's just a creature that's very human-like, you know, where are you going to go to from there? I don't know, the, 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 hmm. So yeah, it depends. But thank you. I'm really I'm really glad you enjoyed that content, though. All right. So we've got Ryu Planeswalker, five dollars. Nathan, it isn't over just because the season is done. There are no beginnings or endings to the Wheel of Time. Mm -hmm. I know. I just have a break. And well, we might probably make commentaries on different things, uh, stuff that might be talked about in the community. And we might should make yeah, we'll yeah. do more videos. Mm -hmm. So there'll be more Wheel of Time content to come. Right. Khalid Ali, good on you all with three hour plus stream. It's appreciated. Our pleasure. Thank you for watching. And the super chat. That too. Austin P, five dollars. That super chatter used secret combinations to summon the spider. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're almost coming to the um the end of the super chats now. We're coming to we're on the last one from Space Cake. <laughs> and he's the one that sent the spider. He goes, Mwahaha, I sent it through your webcam. <laughs> 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 and and that's all the super chats then, are they? Well, thank you very much, guys. We are really grateful for you joining with us in this review and discussion. <laughs> super chats. That was some fun moments that I will remember forever, <laughs> and Oz will too. <laughs> uh, really appreciate you guys joining us for all our reviews. Hope you'll stick around for our future content. And uh, I guess we will start to wrap up. But. Um, uh, it's going to take some time to, so you want to start working on the, the, the closing off? 
the ending of the stream. Yeah? Yeah. Do you mean, oh, I mean, I just gotta press the button. Oh, you gotta press the button? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I'll, I'll try and sign off as you press it. We'll okay. see if we can time I'll it. I'll right. get up and press the button. But you know when to press the button? Well, there's more than one button to press. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess I'll just have to try and sign off. Is there anything you'd want to say, Oz? I hate spiders. You hate spiders? <laughs> and, uh, my love, is there anything you'd like to say? I'm good. I'll see you later, guys. All right. Well, thank you. Really, thank you for joining us, guys. We had a great time. And, uh, as always, remember, stay watchful. <laughs>